What is up, everyone, and welcome to the WAN Show! We've got a great topic for you guys today. That's right, one great topic. <laughs> it's happened. Sony has patented the automatic difficulty curve. Wow. That and somebody made the build corner out of Lego. There. Wow. I went out of my way, Luke. I went out of my way so hard to leave your topics for you. You couldn't possibly have chosen either of those. No, I didn't. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to go for it. I thought you were going to go for it. But anyways, ding dong, the witch is dead. Bobby Kotick is out and I am a happy boy. And we'll talk about that later. Also, Google gives everybody kind of at least like $2, maybe more. What? Yeah. Okay, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The show is brought to you by Thorum, Maximum Settings, and Green Man Gaming. All right, why don't we jump into the headline topic today, which is, of course, that Apple may be investigated over Beeper. <laughs> Gonna try so hard. Gonna try so hard. We can do it. I don't mind waiting. A consulting I've this firm long. used AI to reduce layoffs. We can do that one too. Sure. Yep. The Last of Us multiplayer game has been canceled. Yep. They, yep. they got to remaster it, it again. It got just as canceled as me. It's good. For <laughs> what? So they're still making it? Well, no, I'm, I'm coming back. <laughs> it's a different kind of canceled. Eventually. Eventually. All right, let's do it. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Bobby Kotick. Yes. Go. Bobby Kotick will be leaving Activision December 29th after 32 years, unfortunately, entirely voluntarily. 20 of those years have been as CEO. Kotick oversaw the creation of many of the company's most beloved IPs, including Call of Duty and Guitar Hero. Does uh, anyone actually beloved Call of Duty? Guitar know. Hero, yes, but as far as I can tell, the only people who hate COD as much as COD haters are or COD, COD lovers. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it is one of those communities, I do believe. Uh, he was also allegedly in a recently settled lawsuit to have knowingly created and for years ignored a hostile workplace culture, which has included multiple employee walkouts and strenuous calls for his resignation. Also, including allegedly things like, uh, you know, I'm going to jump to this screen. Where is it? I think we need to do like a trigger warning here if you're going to talk about what yeah. I think you're going to talk about. Yeah. Okay. I was going to be somewhat now indirect, done. but yeah, there, there's that. Uh, the, we don't necessarily 100% know what this means, but he was in Epstein's Black Book. Uh, we'll probably learn, I think, in January? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I heard the Black Book is going to be becoming a, a white book with black letters on it. Yeah. So we'll know like what that actually means because, you know, just being in the book doesn't necessarily oh. mean anything. I, I don't know. If, I think, well, I think the only thing that's happening is they're publishing the flight logs to the island, right? Okay, well, that would also, that would be, I mean, that's a pretty it big It would be tell. a solid indicator. That would, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big one, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, also... Are, are you in the flight logs? <laughs> because I'd like to get a heads up. <laughs> no, if, no, we're good. If, if we're I'm going to find out that, you know, I'm going to be under fire because my longtime <laughs> collaborator was in the flight logs to Epstein's Island, I would really like to know about it right now i like uh i like dangerous vacations but not where i'm the danger so <laughs> I, 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 did, I did not i did not i did not go to the island uh, <laughs> cool um there's also uh, uh, like allegedly he uh ha has w hid uh multiple because i've had enough luke <laughs> i've had enough surprises <laughs> dan were you on that island? We might have to talk after the show. <laughs> Dang it, Dan! How could you do this to me? Uh, uh, uh. This is going in your employee review. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, there's there's uh, multiple accounts of him hiding things that he knew were going on at the company, including, yeah. uh, I'm not going to go into details of things, but including pretty much the worst things you could imagine when it comes to things like sexual harassment and sexual misconduct um, at a company that should definitely have none of that. Um, there's also the time that he uh, called his assistant and left a voicemail threatening to kill her and then settled a legal agreement for it. Uh, so that's another allegedly, but just in general, uh, I'm very happy he's gone. 
So that's that's great. Uh, Microsoft has not appointed a direct replacement for Kotick. Well, hold on. Here's my question, though. Before we get yes. before we move on from that, yeah. I mean, what is left of the company that you love? Oh, nothing at this point. Nothing at all. Like, is is there really anything to celebrate? Like, okay, you know, this is kind of like, um, yeah, honestly, it, it's, it's a- like the end of the Dark Crystal. Okay. So the Skeksis, like, I don't know, they they eventually die or some shit because they don't have life force to draw on or, you know, what whatever ultimately happens to a, a, a Skeksis. Um, but, like, the world is ruined. Yeah. Everything is Yeah, uh, it's, this horrible. is honestly, in a, I'm happy he's gone, you but know? in a way this is actually a victory lap for him. Uh, yeah, because he waited it out. Yeah. He, he had a long, prosperous career Every in the gaming industry. insane thing that he did that would have, like, just destroyed other people. He was made of rubber. He just bounced it right off. Didn't care. Didn't even bother him, really. Well, I mean... Stock price go boom. Yeah. Did it take a hit here or there? Yep, and then it went right back up. We don't know for sure it didn't bother him at all. The boy makes money. That is conjecture. I'm not saying that... Bobby Bills. I'm not saying I disagree with your speculation, but neither of us know him personally. I haven't been to his island. Have you been to his island? No, he probably has one. He might have a few. I, okay, you can't say things like he probably has an island in the context of us talking about Epstein's island. Die. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that we can't say that. Yeah, all right. That's his opinion. Allegedly, he doesn't have an island. No, okay. No, you can't. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, um, boy. Cool. How's so, it going, Bobby? Look, I mean, we're... <laughs> just don't get us in legal trouble, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we're... <laughs> We're not in any legal trouble, okay? <laughs> it's been seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft is not appointed. Did they appointed hear you, a- Dan? Were you, were you muted? <laughs> no, I think I unmuted for that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Microsoft has not appointed a direct replacement for Kotick. Instead, Activision's existing leadership will be placed under Microsoft's game content and studios president, Matt Booty. Discussion question. What is Bobby Kotick's legacy? What would you like to see out of Activision now that he's gone? Bobby Kotick's legacy. I'd like to see Blizzard out of Activision now that he's gone, because I never really gave two shits about anything Activision ever did. Yeah, I mean, either. It's never it's... happening. Like, the... Uh, I, Diablo is a stupid, like, gacha game now. Well, his whole thing was that he didn't want to invest in anything that couldn't be, I believe his terminology was annualized. He didn't want to invest in anything that couldn't have a release every year. Something big uh, for yes. people to purchase every the year. The EA strategy. Yeah, that, that was like, that was his big push. Um, his legacy for the, the finance bros is going to be line go up. His legacy for the gamers is going to be quality go down. Um, I think that's okay, what it is. Okay, so you can talk about quality go down, but, like, we have to have this conversation. Why do the gamers keep buying it if the quality oh, go yeah. down? Is the quality... Okay, this is a tough one. Is the quality mm. bad if people willingly part with their money to have the product more than ever? I think, I think it's... What is quality, Luke? I think it's, like, addiction... I, I think the the things that are going up. So you're saying it's quality crack cocaine, <laughs> quality methamphetamine. No. So it's quality. Wait. You just don't like the product they make. I think the I think the <laughs> I think things like gameplay. Because if you tried it, <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm not getting past this one. <laughs> I'm stuck here, boys. Um, Sop Cannon asked, well, is there bad cocaine, Linus? <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that where the whole... Cra- I don't understand things about drugs, but... I, no, crack is the low-quality cocaine, yeah, okay. is my understanding, but this is all based on me reading on Wikipedia. I actually know <laughs> nothing about drugs. I think that's right, though. Breaking back division. <laughs> <laughs> what even is this show anymore? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, that's great. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just happy he's gone because it feels like now, maybe, possibly, there's a chance. Uh, because I think there was effectively no real chance. Under, yeah, but here's under the thing: Bobby. how is there a chance? Because this is this is Bobby's team. This is this is a culture that, for better or for worse, he oversaw. This is um, yeah. I know, like a, a lot of the the team that was good being gone is because he had this philosophy of like uh, Blizzard games and and Activision games. There are a lot of like obsession games for people so he was like people are going to grow up wanting to be developers or writers or or game designers or level designers or whatever so that they can work on these games so we'll just pay them trash and massively overwork them and we'll just always have employees because everyone loves our games um, and that was actually a thing that they actually did that's, um, that's such a quiet out loud moment yeah like like just <laughs> oh man uh there's there's like tons there's a, of reports of people working at blizzard and then working at other game development studios in the same area making similar games and being like wow this is a wildly different experience i get paid way more i work way less there's a <laughs> bigger like, focus on quality et like this is this is a whole thing like I, I i i was i was blown away when i discovered what the margins are like in the model plane industry like like to, to run a hobby shop um i was just uh, this was back when i was working at ncix and i I picked up some transmitter and like an inexpensive plane because I was like, oh, this seems pretty cool. And sure. I just like kind of, I wanted to try it. Right. And I was just, I was chatting with them because I, I just, I'm curious. I'm a curious person. And I walked into their store and kind of like with Keith's tech shop, there was a lot of, you know, dead stock, you know, a lot of um, like, there were obvious challenges that I was looking at in this, in this hobby shop that was in like Coquitlam or something. It was just like a, like a random, like mom and pop style shop. Yeah. And, um, I've and always I, noticed those types of shops have insane amount of dead stock. Yeah. And I, and I, I was, I was like chatting with the guy about it. And as someone who has worked in retail, I have a pretty good understanding of that just because something is $600 doesn't necessarily mean that you are being ripped off. It could mean that the shopkeep got ripped off at some point. Yeah. Uh, anyone could be doing the ripping off, or in fact, there could be no ripping off being done, and it's actually just a really expensive product to develop. You can't make any assumptions. And so I was just, I was just chatting about it, and I was just, I was blown away by how little margin there was in it. And the guy's basically like, "Yeah, well, the problem is that this is an industry where the only way to survive." is not if you're a more successful businessman than your, you know, your neighbor, um, but if you are more passionate and more willing to do it for nothing out of the sheer joy of it, because someone else will. And I was just like, ah, but it's almost like it, it, as far as I can tell, now there's a lot of problems since then. That was a long time ago. And since then, there's been a massive amount of consolidation in that industry. Like as far as I can tell, between Horizon Hobby, um, hold on. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, uh, I don't wanna say the wrong companies, but, oh, Model Erica, okay, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, <clears throat> I think it's Horizon. Here, who owns E-Flight? It's been a long time. Yeah, Horizon Hobby is one of the big ones for sure. Uh, between Horizon Hobby and I think there's like one other one or something like that. They've basically consolidated absolutely everyone. They own absolutely everything and they have all the power. Hobby Lobby. People are saying Hobby uh, Lobby yeah, is the other the big one. one. Don't they also like... <laughs> buy like historical relics and hoard them i hobby know this, lobby yeah um hobby lobby historical artifacts okay that i don't hobby know. lobby smuggling scandal <laughs> <laughs> the hobby lobby smuggling scandal started in 2009 when representatives of hobby lobby chain or craft stores received a large number of clay belay and tablets originating in uh, the ancient <laughs> <What>? <laughs> near east the artifacts were intended for the museum of the bible funded by the evangelical christian green family which owns the oklahoma based chain international staff blah, 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 blah. yeah oh okay. this is like a thing anyways that's a fun rabbit hole people can go down we don't need to figure that out right now 
Hobby Lobby. Yeah, own all the things. <laughs> okay, cool. Anywho, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Traxxas is still doing their own thing, as far as I can tell. I, I wonder if that's a matter of time. Anyway, I've heard very uh, good things about Traxxas. But my 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 point was back then, before as much consolidation had occurred, um, I was just I was. I had this sort of realization that I was never going to be able to make money doing something that I was passionate about because there would always be someone oh, who yeah. was willing to do it for nothing. Oh, yeah. And then I figured it out anyway, which is great. I, I get to do this job and, you know, this was this was pre the sort of YouTube influencer boom. And these days, what's cool is you don't have to work in the traditional supply chain with the traditional... Um, with the traditional pressures, right? There is no mega corporation that's going to come in and consolidate and then, you know, uh, force your margins down to absolutely nothing and then just just dominate you with their e-tail presence or whatever else, right? Like you could just, you can just talk about these things and then you can take sponsorships from those consolidators and mourn what was lost in the small community shops but hey at least you have your online community now yeah you know it's luke it's something it's a way of the world <laughs> it's it's something I, there's I, only so much stuff you can fight i this didn't make the rules <laughs> something that took me a long time to accept but it is what it is yeah anyway you, can, you I forget, pick your battles but i forget how i got on this topic really but um <clears throat> hobby, hobby, Bobby, Bobby so, Kotick. Bobby, come on. Yeah, so so it's one of those <laughs> things run. where, oh right, what the point I was trying to make is those dynamics existed in industries where mm. it's competitive, and especially when it's niche, right? There's there's an incentive to to drive margins down, and the computer industry has seen this a lot. Like back when I got into the industry, there were countless little computer shops along Bridgeport Road in Richmond. They are basically all gone, not because a mega corporation, you know, consolidated and whatever. Amazon moving into Canada, Newegg moving into Canada, that came way later. And I'm not even convinced that Newegg is that successful in the country. I think Amazon is. Newegg, mm, I doubt it's to the same degree. That was just because they were all at each other's throats. They would kill each other for a nickel of margin on a hard drive. Um, and it was because you just had these people who were super passionate about computers and building computers and electronics and all this stuff. And I guess what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that in some industries where people are excited and passionate, there's always going to be that dynamic, but it takes a certain type of f***ing hole to exploit it, to, to go, oh, this is good and min max it. Yeah, yeah. His exact term is was that they they need annualizable IPs that are exploitable. <clears throat> yeah. So when I talk about line goes up, this has been talked about by like a billion people, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. Uh, where I have my mouse here, 2003 is when Bobby took over as CEO. I think it said 20 years ago. You know that should be right. Um, you can see how the line was pretty flat before then. Bobby takes over. Line starts going up. Line goes up, line goes up, line goes up, line goes up. Big hit, line goes right back up. That's why people liked Bobby. That's it. Yep. All right, then. When it comes to, like, nameless, faceless shares and people investing and just trying to make money, it doesn't really matter what they did as long as that doesn't reflect in line go down. And when it did reflect in line go down, he got the line back up again. So nobody really cared. Yeah. And he was protected because he got the line up. That's how it works. See me, I'm protect tip, not protected. Yeah. Speaking of which, move on. Protect time. tip. Protect tip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sony patents. That's the automatic. worst thing I've ever said. Protect tip. Yeah. Protect tip. <laughs> Can I do like a sad ding? Like a there you go. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm not done. I'm not done with that topic yet. So we're talking about <clears throat> sort of line go up and uh, right, 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 right. We we're talking about is a game. What's the is the quality of the game good? You know, if everybody keeps buying it, something, something. Anyway, I want to talk about this. Hmm. Um, Sony PlayStation is reportedly. Yeah 
has come up with a strategy to break through the the game's pricing barrier that we've talked about extensively in the past. Like the fact that a a, a game has gone from being what like excuse me fifty nine ninety nine in my childhood on the Super Nintendo to being like sixty nine ninety nine today seventy nine ninety nine and again this is Canadian currency so you know there's some some of that's because our dollars aren't doing as well yeah exactly um, it is 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 wild when you consider that the the end credits of a AAA title you know in nineteen ninety four was like. It might have taken five minutes, but that was because they had one name on the screen at a and time. And they'd have, like, animations between them and stuff. And yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Like, not that many people worked on Super Mario World. And that was a big game at the time, right? And um, so, so we've kind of talked about how, how wild that is and how how is this sustainable. And obviously, the industry has come up with some strategies. <laughs> Ten people. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, like I think when you watch the end credits um, video, sometimes people's names come up more than once because they did multiple roles on the game. Oh, Don't yeah, quote yeah, me yeah, on yeah. that, but because this would be a memory from like being a kid. But I think I was like, hey, wait a minute. I'm not an expert of at Japanese names, but wasn't that the same one I saw? Um, yeah, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. But I've definitely seen it in some game or another, even if it wasn't Super Mario World. Yeah, over 6,000 people worked on Grand Theft Auto V. So how is it even possible that these games cost the same amount? Now, obviously, there's economies of scale, right? Yeah. We're selling way more games these days <laughs> to a much broader, more diverse array of gamers. But And, and, and GTA Online is a huge part of that success, yeah. being able to continually collect money from the gamers that, microtransactions. that are playing your game, cosmetics, all of that good stuff. But Sony and actually Nintendo to a significant extent, neither of them have really embraced that the same way as other developers have. Sony still does big single player games. Nintendo still does buy once, cry once. We never discount our games, but for better or for worse, you own them, kind of. Just don't stream them. Or have a tournament of them. <laughs> or probably talk or, about them or something. Or expect to have your save game, unless you give us a cloud subscription fee. <laughs> you know, just Nintendo things. Yeah. It seemed like yeah. an intense bunch over there. Yeah. Um, so Sony has a plan. Or PlayStation, excuse me. They're reportedly planning on selling games in parts now for $50 each which would raise overall prices I have no idea how the math works on nichegamer.com um, but by my math would raise overall prices by $80 to $100 not to $80 to $100 because according to the article here uh, they are and this is this is from the leak uh, from Insomniac Games, according to the article, they are planning to release the next Spider-Man game in three parts for $50 each. And this is something we've seen before with yeah. Last of Us, uh, with the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, is episodic, Wasn't that a big thing with Telltale back in the day? Is episodic gaming back? Is this and, and, whether you want to, whatever you want to brand it, episodic gaming, one game in parts, however you want to sort of brand it, is this a reasonable compromise to you? Ooh. So, but, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm hold thinking, on, I'm on. thinking, think, I'm think, thinking. Okay, I'm so thinking. Bobby Kotick, for, be <laughs> for better or for worse, figured out a way to make that game company successful for its shareholders, and if it isn't successful for its shareholders, it won't exist. Yeah. Which is a cold, hard truth, and it sucks, but it's, it's cold and it's hard and it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> is this a better solution than some, you know, refried beans? You know, we scraped some cheese off the floor. We threw it kind of oh. back in there. And it's 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 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The, yeah, I mean, the second Modern Warfare 2 Black Ops. So my, one, my counter two. to that is yeah. that you're assuming that it's not just going to be both. Well, these are single-player experiences. I'm okay, they, they probably will still have some cosmetics. I'm sure you can buy a Spider-Man suit and, you know, flamboyant pink if you really want to or whatever. Yeah. But, like, 
is this is parts of a game better than a whole other game that's just like a crappier game like would you rather have bought Baldur's three. Gate 3 but in three times because one of each act one for each act sorry yes. and for like a hundred and fifty dollars yeah or would you rather or 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 would you rather have well okay <laughs> or would you rather have Baldur's Gate 2024 Baldur's Gate 2025 Baldur's Gate 2026 and them not be an enormous beautifully voice acted rich immersive game now obviously okay they made it work with Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, they s smashed it. But the thing is that they took a, a home run swing. They did. And those home run swings either go over the fence or they're a pop fly and you're out and you're done. A lot of, company, a lot of companies die because of that. A Obviously, they killed it. Amazing game. Yada, yada. Look, I was talking to a creator not that long ago who was planning to alter their release schedule from uh, more frequent to I think th their target was going to be one a month or one every two <laughs> months. Hold on, <sighs> with the rationale being that Ooh. Mark Rober does it, Ooh. and I kind of went right. But here's the problem: there is one person on Earth who is Mark Rober. His name is Mark Rober. <laughs> Just because Mark Rober can, especially when you have a team behind you, can like... consistently knock it out of the park. Or at least into the upper bleachers, right? Just because he can do... The, the guy's a literal rocket scientist, okay? And no offense, this was a very, very smart person who I respect a lot. If they're watching, yo. Um, but they're not Mark Rober. I'm not Mark Rober. Maybe someday Mark Rober won't even be Mark Rober. And you like, also to do even, that forever. You also need to be in the right like content sphere as well. Yeah. Because you might make a type of content that even if you did smash it out of the park, there just isn't enough people that are interested in that at all to to watch it. So like, uh, there's some problems there too. So So it's very... It's very, very... It's very challenging. It's a challenging business model to just swing for the fences every yes. single time. It's like, it feels, it feels dangerous. So, are we back to episodic gaming, and is it here for real this time? I guess is my question. Is episodic gaming going to fix... Going to fix that? Because like, I, I feel like it's not episodic gaming. I feel like it's one game, multiple parts. Because, like, if it was sure. episodic gaming... It feels like uh, Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. Is the and in, in that case, I'm totally down. Genuinely good expansions, totally down. Is, if Baldur's Gate 3 was like, hey, there's an Act 4, it took us a long time, it's going to cost some money. I'm down. Okay, so then you are I'm down. Totally. But I don't think this uh, is what they're talking about. Did you play Wolf Among Us? No. Have you? Did you play any of Telltale Games games? No. Okay. So what's I get? Uh, so then I can't even have this conversation with you, okay? Dan, did you play Wolf Among Us? Uh, yeah, I played Among Us. Oh, okay, okay, cool, wait, wonderful. Wait, wait, hold what? on. No, no that's I just not the I same had game. to make that joke. Not I'm the sorry. Same game yeah, no, I played. I played that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sus. Yes. This yeah. guy's sus. No. Um, okay. Is it one game? Eh. Or is it six games, or however many pieces it was in? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's difficult. Like, if it's all DLC, right? The story was certainly not over after part one. And as someone who wasn't familiar with episodic gaming, I was, like, kind of annoyed. Like, when's the next part coming out? But, I mean, that's the desired <laughs> result, right? Give me, give me Half-Life Episode 1, Half-Life Episode 2, same sort of vein, maybe? Yeah, like, the story no, wasn't over. Yeah, I don't know if I agree, though, because, like... But were they full price? Were they like sixty dollars for BG, each of the no, six? They were, I, I forget how much was episode. BG three hits a conclusion. It could continue, but it hit a conclusion. Warcraft three hit a conclusion. It obviously could continue because Frozen Throne, but it did hit a conclusion. Mm. Like these are games that come to an end, yeah, a reasonable end. But you could continue the story. It's not a problem. Yeah, but it's you're not feeling left out. Um, it's not like. Oh, and they just entered the building that they've been trying to get to this whole time. Game Twenty more dollars, please. Please buy part two. I like think, it's, I think and that's a, what's going to happen. I with think this, there's I a think. level of intention, in my opinion, because I've seen yeah. some games that launch with day one DLC that's on the disc, you know, that sort of thing. 
But if you're kind of releasing a $30 game and you're you're reusing the same assets and you're kind of just expanding on the story and maybe there's more work that has to be done that way, I could see that as a reasonable level of business model. But... I don't think just expanding on the story is fair to the writers. Just saying. I mean... Yeah, get out. But no, I mean... Okay. I, sorry, I meant like from the non-technical side of things, right? You don't have to remake the engine or, or redesign the concept yeah. or anything like that, right? I don't know, man. I think that you put a lot of pressure on yourself with an episodic model, though, because people are not necessarily going to... I think that whether it's developers putting pressure on themselves or whether it's gamers putting pressure on developers, there is some expectation that if you have five episodes that release over a span of several years... The last episode is probably going to look a little better than the first one. Oh, yeah. I mean, Star Wars Return of the Jedi, the special effects are a lot better than A New Hope because they, like, are and probably should be. Like, I don't think the technical uh, team just goes on permanent vacation after you release episode one and you just leave it completely to the storytellers. I think you'd have to keep that somewhat within reason. What uh, about sure. It's still very likely that they're not going to iterate mm -hmm. on the engine itself, but they might get better at doing certain things. Yeah, they might I could see that. They might expand their, their library of tools that the uh, level designers and stuff can use. What about, like, the <laughs> requirement of the player to buy all every single expansion just to get the complete story well the thing is that i actually okay so i don't mind that mm -hmm. and here's the reason basically episodic gaming is a tax on the people who can't wait to play it and that already exists is it yeah can't wait to play it yeah because you're saying it's going to be discounted in a bundle at some point at or some point if you're patient just like with any other, just like with a game that is in one piece, you can buy it at launch and you'll pay $80 or $90 or I don't know, however many dollars. Uh, this all seems to be very much in flux right now. The games industry seems to be trying to figure out how to make that number higher. And I, I get it because we went from yeah. 10 people working on Super Mario World to 6,000 working it's on It's unfortunate GTA timing because the entire world is broke. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, I also understand it. Yeah, but like the part of... Their salaries are very difficult. What did they say? They lost like 5,000 or 6,000 jobs or something like that? Like you're not going to fix people being broke by no, developers totally. not getting paid yeah, enough. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I, both sides of this suck, basically. It just sucks. Um, so, so one way or another, if you were so excited to play it that you're willing to buy it in pieces for $50 each, and then if at the end of the day, the whole thing is available for probably some reduced rate because games do go down in price as long as they're not made by Nintendo. Is it really any different than what we're doing now? Like what difference would it have made? That's, that's what I'm almost sure. kind of trying to want. Like is, is Anno, uh, whatever year it currently is, is Anno 18, whatever. 1800. Uh, oh, they, I thought it had additional. They all add up to nine. Oh, I know. Fun, right? Yeah, that actually helps, but... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Anno1800, is that episodic gaming? No, that's expansion packs. Those are expansion packs. packs. Yes, those are expansion See, packs. I don't think I like episodic gaming. But I actually very much like expansion packs. I am very down with expansion packs. Okay. I also don't see expansion packs as DLC. Okay, so... I think they are... They It has to be different i All see right. dlc is like you have a new shirt let's go to a movie okay okay is empire strikes back an expansion pack yeah. or is it an episodic game <sighs> that, okay so now now we're getting weird because i don't think it's <laughs> i don't think it's either i think it's just well, the next did, one what i'm asking is did a new hope give you enough closure to the story that you consider it to be a if standalone piece of media. If there's... Um, what, what about A-plot and B-plot? Like Star Wars, all of them would be the A-plot. And then each individual episode is more like the B-plot. And they resolve every episode, right? It's yeah, like, that's like, the point I'm trying okay, to make. So exactly. Exactly. My, my exactly. counter here exactly. is that each movie is substantial enough piece of content that I don't feel like it would be considered a... a Part. I don't know. There were some balls bluer than the surface of Hoth after Empire. <laughs> that story was clearly not over. <laughs> yeah, but it was a full movie. So, like, it, okay, it, well, if, if we're taking if we're taking Spider Man, I believe that's a Sony game. Yeah, with Sony IP. If we're taking Spider Man, not the movie, yeah, but the game. Yes, 
if it just chops literally midway through the game, then that feels like I'm getting ripped in an episodic way. Sure. But, but if they're like, this is episodic game and you get a whole game and then later you get another whole game, it's like, okay, sure. I don't think that's what they're going for. I don't think they're trying to deliver two movies. I don't think that Luke and I are ever going to see 100% eye to eye on this because honestly, I am mostly just kind of talking through it. <laughs> I don't really know how I feel about it. And I think yeah. it's going to come down it, to the individual IPs. Uh, and, and how they get handled. Because I, I can yeah. fully imagine that there's going to be scenarios where this is totally fine. And I'll tolerate a lot of bullshit from something that I'm really, really excited about. Yeah. Um, I am I'm still playing that stupid f***ing Fantasian game. <laughs> I've put like another probably 12 to 15 hours into it in the last couple of weeks. Because I'm just like, darn it, it's beautiful. And... I the music is amazing and it sort of tickles all the right you know spots on me for you know that kind of that kind of retro Archie RPG sort of vibe but with some modern sensibilities but it's a bad game and it was done as two parts I shouldn't say it's a bad game it has very big problems and some of them are caused by the fact that it was done in two parts and it was done in two parts for business reasons in this case not to make you buy part one and part two but to keep you subscribed to apple arcade and i put up with it so basically what i'm saying is i'm just as bad as all of you not quite who are but well not quite I am giving... Do you know how much I've spent on Apple Arcade? Because I have taken so long to finish the game, and I have been just, like... I know someone personally who has spent over $2,000 on League of Legends skins, and I guarantee you, in saying that, there will be a bunch of people in chat that are like, Psh, that's low. I don't think it's the same. Okay. <laughs> do you want to know how much I have spent on Apple Arcade? $150. Hold on. I don't know how much it it's costs monthly. Okay, it's so it's uh, six bucks. Billing problem. Okay, they didn't manage to take the six bucks from me there. Okay, I got a few billing problem <laughs> uh, things. Someone in full plane chat, $4,900 on league skins. Hold on. Okay, I got to add this up. 12. Damn. 18. Oh, they increased but the price. Why? Someone who apparently spent a few grand on Valorant skins. 24. But why? Someone in full playing chat, I mean, I spent $15,000 on a pay-to-win MMO. And let's not even talk about Overwatch 2's complete farce of a sequel that I lost money on. Okay, well, I've only spent $34 on Fantasia. LOL, just my CS2 skins are 6000 USD. Not League, but $4,712 in Star Citizen. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's the same. $24,000 on Puzzle and Dragons. I also would have spent about double that if my subscription hadn't had a problem because the only reason I didn't fix it was because I didn't know because I didn't check that email. Uh, so I would have spent like $70 on Fantasian, which I guess is a perfectly reasonable amount of money to spend. I'm on the final boss now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the point is... I don't remember what the point is anymore. You made, you made your point. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. You happy? Yes. You feel good? Yeah. You like that? All right. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Episode of gaming. I, 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 I see the problems, but I think we're gonna accept it for the IPs and the experiences that we yeah. really love. I mean, if if Valve came out and said, "Yeah, we're gonna do episodes three, four, and five, people would buy the f out of them. Oh yeah, no question. I wonder. No I wonder hesitation. how much they would pre-order the sh out of them. Do you think there's a risk here of shoot self in foot? Like, what if episode one comes out, it's cheaper than you'd normally sell a full game yeah. for, and people don't like it, and they yeah, don't buy the further episodes? I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say that might be the problem with episodic gaming. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not in the boardrooms at any of these, uh, you know, at Telltale or at, it, at Valve or whatever. Does Valve even have a boardroom, or do they just have, like, lounge chairs? I'm not sure. Probably lounge chairs. I, yeah. Who knows? Are yeah. they in? Are the lounge chairs in New Zealand or like the boardroom is one enormous circular table that everyone can fit at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly, because 
the first thing this makes me think of is things like Telltale Games, where the first one that comes out yeah. has a ton of hype and like everyone plays it, and then the further episodes come out and people fall off. Yeah. Yeah, Knight Aaron Dykes. I don't know what this is. Anyway, the point is that says people are accepting it with the Final Fantasy VII remake and are paying 70 bucks for part one and two with a supposed part three on the way and a potential part four coming too. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'm just going to wait. $280 for a game? one game? Yeah. I'm That's gonna, all just Final Fantasy VII. Well, Final Fantasy VII remake, which is has the story has apparently been retooled significantly so but that they do kind game. of it stand alone. It is just Final Fantasy VII. But, but it's Final Fantasy VII remake part one, two, three, and four. But what are the parts? Is it all just Final Fantasy VII? I mean, theoretically, I guess. Like, this isn't... You're not getting 7, 8, 9, and 10 or something? I mean, Final Fantasy VII came on... I think it was four discs. So, like, you know, it doesn't seem that unreasonable. I mean, the last disc was basically just, like, very little content because it had to contain so many of the areas that you had already explored. But that's neither here nor there, Luke. Each part of the Final Fantasy VII remake feels like a complete game. If, so then if you're okay with that, then it's all good, right? I so am then, personally okay with well, that. Well, then what if the writers for Baldur's Gate 3, who are obviously very talented, yeah. what if they were just given the objective of making Acts 1, 2, and 3 tie up in a nice little bow at the end of each one, and then they could release a year <laughs> apart and you know give everyone something to do in that constant cash flow? I don't think it would have worked as well. I, look, it won game of the year. Yeah. So obviously... To go back and say, well, maybe we should have done it, yeah, that is, is kind of stupid because yeah. it's been a huge financial success for Larry and, and been beloved by gamers. Yeah. But for we're not talking reason. necessarily specifically about Baldur's Gate 3. We're talking yeah. strategically about just, how swinging for the fences every time may not be viable for everyone who, whose name is not Larry and Studios. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I pretty much because guarantee you whatever. They're whatever not their Mark next, Rober, you whatever, know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not Mark Rober. You're not Larry in Studios. Sorry. Um, yeah, because so I can stop trying to make games worse. You. I'm not trying to make games worse. I'm trying to have a conversation. I, I, I think it's a risky move. Just yeah. like not doing it is also a risky move. I, th- I think there isn't really like a safe bet here because if you release an Act One is bad, uh, you you might be able to decide to just stop making the other ones. So that might actually Ow. be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Except theirs was good, and they just decided to stop making it anyways. Um, whatever. But, yeah, like so like that might be helpful from a financial investment standpoint. Um, but I think your chance at, like, a really big splash kind of falls off after the first one. Yeah. No, like, 100%. I'm wondering if, like, if, if Larian dropped BG3 Act 1, and it killed because it would have, are they going to see the same amount of total success at the end if they release... They're going to have a full year for that hype to kind of die yeah. down, for people to get distracted and go play other games. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe you don't get the same kind of, you know, incredible community around the game. Yeah. No. The constant discussion. Like, I'm sure no, overall right. it still would have killed, absolutely, because it's mean, a fantastic game. We're going to find would out. Would have done as well, though? I don't know. We're going to find out, because clearly this is yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Um, it did early access. I know they had early access, but that's not what we're talking it's about. It's not though. the same thing. Uh, okay. The last thing that I wanted to talk about, like gaming wise, before we say goodbye to this topic is, do I have to beat the final boss of Fantasian or can I just like call it here? I, uh, you know, it, it did that like classic JRPG thing where the final boss has like three stupid f***ing phases. phases where they get like increasingly ridiculously difficult. I've already spent about an hour fighting it. And then it's like, oh yeah, it's there's another phase. This is like their true god form. And I just like I like quickly looked. I was like, how hard is this stupid fight? Cuz I like scraped by the second phase and the third phase is like ludicrous like i'm basically gonna have to go reload a save point somewhere else like at this point can i say look i i played there's a there was a no progression bug this like stone golem at a river does didn't fall over when i killed him so i can't walk over his body and like get to some good stuff on the other side and i'm just like can i just be done with this thing and can i just watch the end credits like on youtube what do you think Philosophically, I've put like sixty hours into it. Philosophically, it's a video game. Who cares? Well, no, I just, I just mean, I, I just mean, like, like, look, do I? 
have I invested enough I, I, time to say, look, I, I played the game. I had stuff like, have, have I told you about my, um, oh crap, what is the name? XCOM 2? Have I told you about that? Where uh, I had to yeah, just where you had the non-progression YouTube? bug. Yeah, yeah, that sucked. Um, it was a it was a hardcore run, so you you only had the one save because they wanted like if people died and stuff on your team, there was permadeath, so they didn't want you to be able to go back and get them back again. Yeah, and then I got into a non-progression bug, so I couldn't load a previous save and then avoid it. Yeah, it so frustrating. Yeah, Final um, Fantasy Tactics was famous for that too. I want to clarify because there seems to be confusion. No episodic content and Larian releasing Act One as a uh, standalone game? Uh, no, not a standalone oh. game. A um, early access thing oh. is super not the same thing. Okay. Like very, very, very much not the same thing. Yeah. We're talking about marketing investment. We're talking about a lot of people just straight up ignoring stuff because of the early access flag. I had pre-ordered Baldur's Gate 3 because I was a huge fan of Original Sin 2 and I was pretty sure it was going to be good. I had it loaded and never launched the early access version, because I'm like, it's early access. I don't care that people say it's good. I'm going to wait till it's out. A lot of people are going to act that way. It is very much not the same thing at all. So just we're moving on from Man, there. Man, they say I have to beat it. You don't have to beat it. <sighs> I'm gonna, like leveling in this game is so hard. And it's because it was like part one, part two. So the leveling and like, XP curve is super messed up if, because they didn't want you to level too much toward the end of part one and then in part two i, I don't know what happened like there's a whole thing with this game like it, it, it in conclusion don't have apple fund your game and make it exclusive to apple arcade because <laughs> there's a lot of problems with it oh, it's gonna take if forever the, if this was something like diablo one you would use like a trainer or a glitch to boost your team up and then you would just go through the fight and by doing that, who cares anyways? So but just go watch it on YouTube. But if it was Diablo 1, then you would just respawn back at the thing, spawn a new generated dungeon, go fight level 17 a couple more times, and then fight him. The problem is that it's really, really difficult in this game to farm XP. Oh. That's the issue. Oh. Is that it's, it, it will take I, forever to grind levels. And I just don't think the, I care. The tedium of that does not sound valuable to me. Yeah, all right. Um, if it was a difficulty thing. And yes, Jack, Jack Smoo says, you don't have to beat a game that's basically forcing you to keep a subscription by making the game harder yeah, than it exactly. needs to be. That. Now, to be clear, there's a lot of things about the game that are hard in ways that are really creative and really cool. I don't think I have ever played an RPG where the boss fights are that unique and that different. Like you have a party that's, I think, a total of eight characters and you can swap them in and out anytime you want in a, in a, in a fight, except when you can't, which is really obnoxious. Um, and I, 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 I don't think anyone has had exactly the same strategy. You know, everything from, you know, rocks that go around the boss that you have to like time to try to get your attacks through or around because uh, different attacks either strike from the top down or they go around or they penetrate or they can be blocked, but they're more powerful. Like there's, there's, it's actually got a ton of depth to the combat. I had some people really upset with me about uh, what I said about Sea of Stars last week, where I said I found the combat kind of bland. Um, is it because of In Contrast? In Contrast to Fantasian and Chained Echoes, it's, it is bland. I mean, Chained Echoes is easy, so that's, that's a problem with that, because it just you just highlight any enemy, and it's like, yeah, here's the weaknesses, and like here's how much health it has. So and, I hear all of that, but yeah. Ether Dark in Full Plane Chat said it well. He said, you're being milked. If part of the game design is like make them make them take a long time, make it make it really annoying. They're really invested by the end of the game. They're going to keep going. Like, I don't know. I'll get them hooked on the myth that is excellent boss battles. Yeah. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cancel my Apple Arcade subscription right now. And if you can beat it in time, then good. And, and if, if I not, beat it in time, then I'm done. And if I don't, then I'm not. And as far as I can tell, fair enough. my save game will not be retained. Um, that was a big thing for me. That's the reason that I waited so long to play this Your game. save game will not be... Yeah, because it's destroyed in the cloud. Isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> so that's why I, I held out for so long until I found out, because I didn't actually know, because I didn't look into it, that the game was completely funded by Apple. And I was like, oh, all right, well, this is just never coming to anything. Like, I thought it was just an exclusivity deal, as far as I can you tell. You can't, like, back up the save game in iCloud? That's disgusting. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to pay for it makes iCloud. Me angry. 
I thought there was a certain amount of iCloud that's free, like oh. Google Drive. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe. Guys, let know. me know. Let me know. Can you pirate the game? I mean, not unless you not unless you've found an iOS emulator. Like, I, pff, not not that I'm aware of. So you know what? Five gigs of storage for free. I don't I don't know if that's possible at, at all. I just don't um, think your I don't know if your Apple Arcade what is save it called? games Apple Arcade? go there. Yeah. Arcade. Apparently, it's restored game. when you resubscribe. Sorry. But I mean, after how long? Because I I will never resubscribe to Apple Arcade. So I would. Yeah, I really wanted to wait until it was available on a platform where I could back up my save game. I wanted to play it on PC, but now at least... You know what? I'm saying I've played it. Yeah. I, I left it I left it paused last night you, because it was really have... late, and I was like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this is going to be like another hour of fighting this stupid thing. His health and his uh, damage double with each, between, with each phase. And you've seen each phase, right? I've seen the first two phases. I'm about to see the third phase. Okay. I think that I could just say, yeah, I could have gone and gone and like got the legendary, you know, whatever's and grinded is for there, more upgrade crystals and whatever. Is there adventure slash story to getting that legendary thing you just mentioned or is it just grinding? Not much. Okay. Uh, I've I've solved most of the quest stuff. There's like this void realm that you can go to. As far as I can tell, it just has like some juiced up uh, versions of some monsters you fought before. It seems kind of lazy and tacked on. Okay. So I think I'm just not going to bother. Lazy and tacked on like a pool of experience that they decided to increase the difficulty by so that you had to spend more time playing the game maybe? Yeah. yeah. Um, Fantasian playtest on Steam? Fantasian playtest. I know that what it's listed. I know that it was listed on Steam. This happened well after I had uh, already moved pretty deep into it. Last recorded update was five months ago. Yeah, this this showed up then, and as far as I can tell, nothing has really changed since then. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. It's possible it'll get released, but like I said, it turned out that it was pretty much completely funded by Apple as far as I can tell, so I don't know if Apple is strongly incentivized. Like, does Apple really need the, like, you know, 100 grand or whatever that this game is going to make when it releases on Steam? I don't know how much hype there is around it anymore. There was a lot there of There was a up. lot at the start, yeah. But now it's also... There's also been like a like a retro RPG renaissance. Absolutely. Since then, where the games just have been available and you can just like buy them. So there's there's not a lot of, and they're gonna have to do a lot of f fixes to make this game ready for a broader release. I think. I don't know if I told you or not, but uh, AMD GPU update no longer crashing. Oh, you got a, a driver update that fixed it? Uh, theoretically. All right. I haven't had problems since. I didn't have problems for like six months, and now I haven't had problems for like a week. So I don't know if I trust it or not yet, but I will probably be diving back into Final Fantasy VI this weekend uh, with the hopes that it doesn't delete my progress again. Um, oh, here Nobu Sakaguchi yeah. apparently uh, always wanted to release it on other platforms and has been talking about it a lot because he can't. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense because Apple paid for it. <laughs> what a what a bummer. Uh, all right. Oh. We're supposed to explain merch messages and do two hey. merch messages. All right, Dan, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Merch messages are the way to interact with the show. Ooh, and we have something really exciting for you guys this week. <gasps> have you seen all these? I was creeping them before the show. What? I was looking at Why it a little bit. Why are you ruining bit. things? Why are you ruining things, Luke? <laughs> okay, well, why don't you show them? Yeah. Why don't you show them the pins? Yeah, we have flow plane dark mode because you can't get it on the website, so you might as well get a pin of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Say the line, Bart. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Then we have rainbow and non-rainbow versions of yeah. the float plane logo. These are actually super clean. When we when we did the, like, fail print ones, I was like, oh, these are pretty good, actually. Like, these are probably fine. They seemed okay yeah. to me. And then these are, these are really nice. Ooh. Sarah did such oh. a great job of the backings for these. Uh, we've got the rest of Series 3. Drew some inspiration from the screwdriver, from the classic intro, from the ABCs of gaming. And then this, my personal favorite. You whined, you <laughs> bitched. Oh, come on. And now you've got it. Yeah. The Luke enamel pin 
from that old pin series that had all of the LMG staff at the time. Luke technically didn't work for Linus Media Group at the time, so he didn't yeah. get a pin. Yeah. And he has been riding me about that for like <laughs> five years. Did you see what the background is? Yeah, it's Salty Luke. <laughs> from one specific episode on the show. Wow, amazing. <laughs> and it's resolved now. We good? Nope. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our, our series three pins. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it works with the like hollow one. Uh, hollow one? Yeah, there's there's one special one, like the yeah the float plane one. Mm. Yeah, the the dark mode one. I think that one is. I, I don't know if you can like. It says series three on it. Yeah, but I don't know if you can choose that one or if it's random. Oh. I can't remember. Um, oh. Anyway. They're in the bonus bin now, so that's cool. Oh, hey, we have a correction from last week's newsletter. Uh, one of the features that we mentioned for our upcoming Precision Driver is that we said, uh, and just below the end cap, you'll find what we believe is a first for a driver of this size, organized in-handle bit storage. Uh, this wasn't correct, as the plastic version of iFixit's Precision Driver does feature a removable end cap with integrated SIM tool and three slots in the end cap for bits. That is a thing they have. Um, yeah, I have never actually used that one. And the, the only precision drivers that we bought for comparison were metal ones. Um, thank you to the community for the feedback and correction. Cause I mean, iFixit is still a collaborator of ours. So we weren't, we weren't trying to like, we're trying to like uh, dump on their, uh, their glory there with the yeah. uh, integrated bit storage. Uh, our bit storage is, differenter than what they did and we don't consider that the plastic driver to be a competing product in any way but yeah we should have definitely been more accurate with our language there hey make sure to sign up for the creative creator warehouse newsletter for more new content in the next few weeks we're gonna have that at the bottom of lttstore.com all right why don't we go ahead and get to a couple merch messages oh, oh right how do you send them uh, they show up down here, or they go to our producer, Dan, who will reply to them or forward them to someone who can help, or maybe sometimes forward them to me and Luke to talk about. All you got to do is go to the cart, see the merch message box that shows up whenever we're live, and type out your merch message, and then Dan will uh, maybe pick one for us to talk about. What do we got, Dan? Yeah, I've got one kind of on the last topic, if you're okay with that. Yeah, uh, sure. Oh, no, wait, no, I uncurated that one. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> loved okay. the ASL discussion last week. I actually took my first ASL class this fall. Um, Aside from cochlea implants, what new tech do you think may help deaf or, and hearing people uh, may help deaf and hearing people communicate with each other? Uh, honestly, I, I, this is such a cop-out answer, but AI. The ability for computers to interpret sign language is basically negligible without um guesstimations involved exactly yeah without some kind of neural network um to rely on because it's not going to be an exact thing every time not only like you were talking about last time is some amount of it creative yes um but it's also physical movements that could be slightly off here or there or someone might have a slightly unique twist to how they do it um and it might be able to be inferred uh, but would, yeah. Uh, Mickers Oss in Floatplane Chat says, I want to learn sign language just so I can talk to my wife across a public space like a pool. It is way more useful than you would even think. It's incredible. Crowded restaurant. It's, it's loud, let's go. And you can do that from across a friggin' room. Yeah. I've noticed. I'll meet you over there. So like, oh, <sighs> I've noticed this too, uh, not in just you, but I have also noticed it in you because you're probably the person I've seen do ASL more than anyone else, but um, you'll whisper while you do it. That's for oh. lip reading reasons, right? Uh, no. Actually, a lot of signs have a mouth gesture mm. that goes with them. So like... Like, like you'll like there's facial expressions. It's, it's a whole thing. It's what you're saying. It's where you're saying it. It's how big you're saying it. Like if I say, um, oh, so, you know, I, uh, like I got in my car. This is a little car. But if I say I got in my car, 
Well, I'm That's in. Like a, a I'm probably in a truck or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, that yeah. matters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so everything matters. Um, how big you're gesturing? How sharp you're gesturing? Like, if you're like, I'm angry. Like, you need to stop. Okay, stop. It's enough. You know, stop. Like, it, like every it's it has expression yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly the same that way that sense. our that our voices do. Yeah. Um, and I forget what you were saying before, but I was responding to it, and I think I'm done. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You did. I I, I said uh, you whisper when you. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, one great example of that <laughs> is that the bird in ASL still means like you know. Yeah, yeah. Kind of what it means, but it's not nearly as strong as it is to like hearing people. And the the mouth gesture for it is like like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, but it doesn't actually mean like you the way that it does in in like hearing culture or like you know up yours or whatever. Like, it doesn't. It's not as bad, is my understanding of it anyway. Hmm. But yeah, no, there's definitely. Hmm. There's definitely mouth things, but if you see me mouthing along, it's probably just because I don't speak. Not quite as fluent, well. so you're kind of running. A yeah. lot of the time, so I'm yeah, I'm I'm not at the level of fluency where I just think in sign. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> How long will Pins Series Three be on sale for? Uh, wrong side of Christmas to buy them all. Um, I don't know. We produce them, and then they are gone. Forever? Forever is a big word. Uh, we've talked about it internally. No real, like, intention to bring them back, though. Mm. Yeah, uh, well... <sighs> That's good for me to know, because i got to answer these people, right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's something we've talked about, and it's one of those things where it's like we don't want to... We don't want to create, like, artificial scarcity. Uh, that, that's not the point, but we also... We also don't want to just have every pin ever, like, as a stocked item on the store forever. Uh, so I, I think that it is never impossible that something would ever come back. But I would say at this time that we have so many ideas for pins that to loop back around and reprint them seems improbable. Yeah. Yeah. Might not be as cool for collectory people, too. <clears throat> One more. What do you think? Yeah, actually, that's an interesting question. Is it a favor to the people who haven't bought one? Or is it to reprint something? Is it more of a favor to the people who haven't bought one? Or is it more of an FU to the people who are collectors and who bought it wanting something exclusive? <clears throat> NFT. <Ooh. clears throat> Yeah, but that's digi that's a whole other Different. thing. That's a, this is an Different. actual physical like thing that was crafted and and is like. I, I mean, that's me saying I'm not entirely sure. I would feel bad if uh, if I wanted something that was exclusive and then somebody else got it and then it was like, oh well, I thought I was special. But you're not marketing it as like a. This will only be made once. There's only a hundred. I think of there's them. been a couple pins that way, but not in general. No. Yeah. I've I've seen I've seen people get very angry at we're doing a serialized number of one to a hundred and that's all we'll ever make and then like they do another run of oh yeah that's that's super I hate super that bad. I don't think it's the same as that at all that's not a good thing to do no yeah. evil all right hit me again Dan sure just flying back from Disney on my honeymoon Linus what did you and your wife do for your honeymoon and have you ever built a lightsaber uh, we went to Greece uh, we went to Santorini. Uh, our intention was to stay there for two weeks. Uh, it took about four days, I think, for us to start getting bored. Uh, we didn't realize, you know, we're from Canada, where places are really big, and we ATV'd the entire circumference of the island, like, on, like, the something -th day, and kind of ripped around across it as well, and we were like, oh, um, and we started kind of memeing on what there was to do on the island. Um, so we'd be on the ATV and we'd be like, uh, we'd like get each other's attention, like, like really excited. We'd be like, look, honey, scenery. 
Um, we're more doers than viewers. Yeah. <laughs> if this, that kind of makes sense. This is a problem that I run into when, when traveling. Cause there's like some specific stuff I like to do in traveling, but I find not a ton of people like doing that. So there often isn't like actually that many opportunities for it. Yvonne and I, since then, usually come back from vacation far more tired than we were when we left for it. It's yeah. not a refreshing thing for Absolutely. us. Uh, we went to Mexico once for, I believe it was seven days, and we dived 13 times or something like that. Like Heck, it was yeah. ridiculous. We went as many times as you can go without it becoming a problem for your health. Yeah, that's what, that's what I, when I was in Greece a while back, that's what I did. I was either... Out on the water, out under the water, studying or sleeping. There was like pretty much nothing in between. I guess eating, but I would usually only eat one meal a day because I didn't have time. Um, so after that, we we kind of went. Uh, we had the I had the idea of visiting one of our like Left for Dead gaming buddies in Dubai because we happened to be a lot closer than normal. And it just turned out that it didn't really work out. We found flights and everything. And we were, just, I think, oh, the visas would have taken too long. Mm. Um, so again, ignorant Canadian thing. We just thought that, you know, Canadians just walked into any country they felt like because Most. we do have a pretty good passport. Uh, but it turns out Dubai needed like a few days and it would have eaten up a lot of our vacation, our, our limited amount of time because we still had to fly back out of, I think it was Athens or something like that. Um, so we didn't end up going to Dubai. Instead, we flitted over to, uh, I think we I think we might have spent a couple days in Athens. And then we were like, F it, let's go to Rome, uh, where I have to, man, this is going to be super unpopular. I did not like the food. In Greece? Rome. Rome. I didn't like the food in Greece either. It's really oily. I'm not that into, I don't like oil on my food. I found, so I mentioned that I was having one meal a day. I found this one cafe that I really liked. I had food at a few places that I really didn't <sighs> like. Then I found one cafe that was amazing and I ate there every day. <laughs> People are so upset with me. Like, man, maybe it was just the touristy places or whatever. That's but a like, big problem. No offense to the birthplace of like pizza or whatever, but wow. Where, where, like, is that all I the had, cheese you're going to put on it? I had the best pizza I've ever had at a extremely Italian pizzeria in Germany. So I, I believe it's a thing. It's probably the tourist trappy stuff though, because the places I was eating in Greece that were garbaggio, um, yeah, were tourist trappy. Sure. And then right. I found this cafe place that was like a little bit off the road, didn't have anything on their menu in English type of situation. And it was fantastic. Very good. Yeah, very, very I, good. Um, I, I just, it was so expensive, and it's just like, remember, guys, this we were we were on our honeymoon, which you know means we were splurging a little, but we we had a house to pay for. Like we had just bought a house the year prior, and we were trying to put in double our monthly mortgage payments in order to pay down as much principal as possible. So maybe. If you go to Rome and you blow a bunch of money on like really high end food, uh, like it's better. But I remember at the time feeling like these meals are costing double, literally double of what we would pay for a nice meal at home. And it's like a flat thing of bread with like a bit of sauce and like some cheese sprinkled on it. That's a pizza. Are you kidding me? That is sort of a thing. Where's my toppings? Oh boy. Yeah, okay. well, I think that is a very Canadian. Yeah, I mean that and that's fair enough, but it just it offends me from a bill of materials standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing that's going to get you canceled this show. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oh, you, you can't no. yeah, you it. can't you can't tell me that like 14 cents worth of flour and like half of a friggin' cherry tomato and like a little bit, a little couple sprinklings of cheese is worth like the 20 euros or whatever it was costing me at the time. There's like, also a I'm single sorry, leaf of no. basil. You're forgetting about the single leaf of basil. Do you know the price of basil? <laughs> it's basil, Dan, but okay. No, I'll get canceled from my side of the pond. <sighs> oh man. There's things I can, I can say about this, but uh, neither I nor anyone in chat is going to change his mind. So it, doesn't really matter. No, I, uh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. There's, there's, to, to include expenses, the, the oven at like Domino's and the oven at 
whatever wherever you ate is probably not exactly the same caliber. Sure, but why uh, would I why would I give two shits what oven it came out of? I I'm eating the food, not the oven. Yeah, but that is going to result in a difference. People people do this thing where like when they when they analyze pizza they like look at the bottom of it to see the like the cook marks and all this other type of stuff because it like influences stuff that I don't understand or care about personally but it's like it's a whole thing it didn't taste good okay and the portions were small and I was still hungry <laughs> this sa- okay was it a tourist trap spot though I don't know yeah it was well rated that doesn't mean much I know yeah. I know. I found when I was in Japan, by the way, they are brutal. Like nothing is rated five stars. Most of <laughs> the like hilarious. good stuff is like mm, 3.8. Like it's, it's, <laughs> they are so brutal. <laughs> I was looking around like, wow, there's like nowhere good. What's going on? I was like, oh, good is like 4.2. There, there, <laughs> there is like, it's like the highest rating in this entire town. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, okay, yeah, let's do some more topics before I get myself super cancelled by the Europeans. Yeah, a- Avon Fox said, do you charge for the two-minute IT fix or the years of experience gained to make it two minutes? Well, that it depends. If the fades, IT fix, like, f***ing sucks, that then argument it fades doesn't matter. He hates the pizza. Yeah, it just um, didn't taste good. Yeah. And it's, it's, look, it's not like I can't accept different kinds of pizza. Like, I'll go to New York and eat, like, a New York-style pizza or whatever. Like, I don't care. Have you had Chicago Deep Dish? Uh, oh, yes. I went to a... Yeah, it's a, that's a whole thing. Reportedly fam- I'm going to get canceled now. I went to a reportedly like famous, very well-known Chicago deep dish place. I can't say I'm a fan. That ain't it, man. I, that um, was a mistake. Uh, you're going to get, uh, get uncanceled by get the Americans entirety. You're mad at us. No, it doesn't matter all of New York mad at us. now loves you. <laughs> they can't do anything from over there. Yeah. The Americans are going to be like, hey, yeah, uh, what do I don't know. I can't do an American accent. It doesn't matter. The place. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna come A-ya up here. It. That's, that's how that's how you sound, Americans. <laughs> Aya, what's it? <laughs> yeah, I found it soggy. Oh man, and it's just soggy bread is not a feature. That's a bug. It's just I'm like sorry. a cheese meat pie at this point. Sorry, which not I understand. Sorry. They're called pizza pies. Just plans, make a like, lasagna. Yeah. You know, you use There's a, better things you can do with that mix of ingredients. Use a wheat product that is not so susceptible to being Soaks. a disgusting, mushy mess. Yeah. <laughs> God, it, I was like actually pretty excited for it. And we went and we had to wait in line for this place because it's like, yeah. I don't even remember who I was with, probably Brandon. But yeah. we had to wait in line for this place uh, that was like all well known, blah, 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 blah. We wait in line, we get our pizza, one bite in. I'm just like, Man, what? I went to a supposedly famous Jewish deli in New York, like in Manhattan, and I ordered a Reuben. Like a yeah. And I was just like, it's fucking dry. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> How do you even like make a Reuben dry? I don't know. <laughs> they didn't have enough mustard on it. I was like, what? It's dry. It, <laughs> Reuben is like, it's like covered. Yeah, it's like covered in sauerkraut. How do you even manage I to make I don't that know. Okay, to be clear, you can make a, an amazing Reuben and you can make a disgusting Reuben and there's basically nothing in between. It's, it's pretty. But like, imagine screwing up it just being dry. <laughs> what the heck? And like again, there was like a line. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here going, "Well, I find a lot of the this line is the places. most basic sandwich that like every everything else was like." I, I was like, "Okay, I'm just gonna go with like the one." You know, it's like going to a Thai restaurant, and being like, "I'll have your pad Thai and some you know peanut sauce chicken skewers." Yeah. If you can't get this <laughs> right, realistically, nothing else on your menu is probably any good anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I find a lot of the places that get the lines. Uh, yeah, it's it's not the way to go. Like uh, my, it's all hype, man. It's hype. When my brother and I were in Japan, um, I think I've told this story before. But the, all the food that we had in Tokyo was honestly like not very good. But it's because we weren't really trying. We we're just like walk by. Uh, okay, we'll just go in there. Well, whatever. It's just like a random ramen place. Like, yeah. So it was it was like fine. Probably fine. But it wasn't yeah. amazing or anything. And then we went to everything I had in Japan when I went was not bad though. No, none of it I was I couldn't find anything bad. bad. 
I ended up having uh, one thing that I didn't like, but it was a mistake on my part. I ordered something I shouldn't have. I just didn't mm. take enough time when I was looking at the menu. So that, that, it's not their fault. And then we went to the smaller town that we were staying at for when we were doing the drifting event. Yeah. And spent a little bit more time picking the places and stuff. Every single time it was like mind-blowingly good. Every single time. But it was a lot of like, you know not the first result on Google type of stuff. I just like to jump in and say that Canadian food is shit too. Yeah. Like we don't even have a cuisine. <laughs> poutine. Honestly. Oh, come on. Poutine. poutine. When's the last time you had good poutine? Uh, have you ever yes. had good poutine? Costco. Because legitimately, I think it's eight years ago. The Costco one is... <sighs> No, Montreal. Montreal is where they're, they're okay, acceptable. So here's the problem. Even in Montreal, I found it's pretty hit or miss. I lived there for an entire summer. Uh -huh. Even in Montreal, very hit or miss. And the and it's it is always something basic. They can have great fries, delicious gravy, real curds of cheese, real curds. And if you don't fucking heat up the gravy enough and it doesn't melt the fuck cheese you're not eating poutine you're eating fries in gravy that are cold and hunks of cheese you're eating them separately now if the cheese is not melted it's disgusting what, what do you think about poutine abominations um that's oh, a that's no. a thing i came up with on the spot but uh there's a there's a uh, I'm not even going to be able to find it. And like, honestly, we put way too much sugar in everything. I, I blame the Americans. They're, they're a bad influence oh, on yeah. our dietary habits. Yeah. I put, I eat too much sugar, 100%. Yeah. The amount of stuff that poutine crimes on Reddit, I haven't heard about that. Um, but yeah, there's this restaurant called Streets that's local. It's not Streets as in the road. It's S-T-R and then Eats. Sure. But it's one word, whatever. Um, they have... They have poutine. There's no like menu. There's just order online. How do I see the menu? Hello? What a weird website. Um, but I've seen, I've seen their menu before, which I don't know if I can even find it right now. Um, but they have, they have some weird, it's definitely not poutine, but it's in the poutine category, but it's kind of poutine related poutine. Um, mm -hmm. Can I find it? Okay, here we go. I got a menu. Okay. Bowls. Fries. All right, classic. Classic poutine. poutine. Yeah. Okay, fine. Sure. Quebecois, fries, cheese, curds, gravy. Then they get it. Oh, they just call it hot. Fr no, pierogi poutine. Mini pierogies, bacon, sauteed onions, shredded cheese, green onions, sour cream. And oh, there, there's okay. no gravy. There's no cheese curds. Weird. Buffalo chicken poutine, crispy chicken, Frank's red hot sauce, gravy, cheese curds. I think they're taking some artistic license with the word poutine. Yeah, they're talking fries in a bowl with stuff on top of it. That's as far, <laughs> that's yeah. the minimum requirement for poutine. I mean, by that logic, you can get fish poutine and it's just like deep fried haddock <laughs> on top of fries. Yeah, yeah. It's fish <laughs> and chips, coleslaw, but in like, a different physical <laughs> orientation. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think that's how like most people get around it is they just ditch the original <laughs> what poutine actually is and they're like oh, i'll have this other stuff yeah and like on it like japa dog japa dog is supposed to be like super famous it's like it's a hot dog yeah i had one of those i was like that is definitely a hot dog with stuff on top of it i yep. find a lot of the famous places personally i enjoy more flavor i find a lot of them to be on the more mild side both oh. spice but then general flavor as well i find them to be more chilled out so, so yeah, I know we've kind of dunked on everyone's food. I guess what I'm trying to say is we're just haters. Yeah. So don't take it personal. Yeah. Please, America, don't come after us. None of my favorite places <laughs> to eat around here serve Canadian food, let alone North American food. So it is what it is. Yeah. I, honestly, I think that's one of the best things about living in Vancouver. Yeah. Food melting pot. Very good. Yeah. You can yeah. get like anything here Yeah, and it's, and it's good. And I think honestly, that's part of what kind of spoils me. Um, like going back to, um, so I was thinking going back to something we were talking about before, but I forgot now, but yeah, no, it's uh no, it's great. It's great. Yeah. All right, why don't we... Uh, oh, yeah, we're supposed to do some topics. Sorry, Dan. Um, how did we start talking about poutine? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, Sony. 
patents an automatic difficulty curve. Right, no, this was the one I wanted to talk about with my what if you don't quite finish the game thing. Because beating games, all of a sudden, what, is just not going to be a thing anymore? Sony has filed a patent for a system that dynamically tweaks the difficulty of a game based on player performance using specially designed algorithms. The algorithms would assess and project player performance, then automatically and incrementally adjust parameters relating to movement speed, delay or hesitation, character strength, number of competitors, or other metrics until the player's performance matches an expected level. This is never going to work. Uh, similar, they're never going to get this patent. Similar systems have been implemented in past yeah. games. Notably, for in years. Beat 'em up God Hand from 2006, which grows more challenging in response to player successes. So, the discussion question here is not about Sony's patent. I think they're going to have an extremely difficult time patenting this concept. But what I would like to talk about is are the days of beating games gone dead over no are you just being stubborn no i don't think so actually okay i i, I think maybe stuff like that is going to invade certain triple a things um but people are gonna resist some amount of game developers are always gonna resist to some degree and we saw like when was that like 24 14 2015 uh we saw triple a games go kind of in the hole a little bit and the indie scene just exploded because they saw a hole because triple a industry was leaving that hole open um i don't i don't think you'd see a uh you know elden ring style game make That's itself fair. completely yep. unbeatable i don't think you'd see a Baldur's gate 3 make itself completely unbeatable there's gonna be these franchises that are like no there's a oh, conclusion hold on that's not what i really meant i meant the achievement of beating a game being over oh yeah oh, i think I, people will beat games because they're gonna design it so that when you're playing spider-man you could oh, ba you, like, barely be lose. able to hold a controller yeah, yeah. and still be an unbeatable badass so, so I still, oh i was going completely the opposite I way with i this. still don't think that's yeah. gonna be a thing though because okay um I'm, I'm going to just constantly use Baldur's Gate. I'm, I really tried to find another one with Elden Ring, but even, yeah, I don't think this is a thing on Elden Ring. I think there's just one difficulty, right? Uh, I sure. actually don't know. I, think I mean, you, just, you I think can definitely just make life harder for yourself if you just, you know, don't wear any armor Custom or challenges and stuff, yeah. but I think there just is Elden Ring. It just is the game. It is, it is one difficulty. Um, but like there's three difficulties. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. I thought there was literally one, but anyways. Yeah. There's, um, there's only one to him. <laughs> yeah giga chad gamer um, Baldur's gate oh elden ring has one sorry what got him uh Baldur's gate him. 3 which is what they were probably talking about um has different difficulty levels that are actually very specific and change the game significantly um and i think there's also other games where people will play that game or at least find replayability from that game due to specifically the difficulty levels Yep. I think there's going to be other games, like I think you mentioned Spider-Man. Yeah. Totally. And at a certain level, like, I mean, I haven't played the game, but probably, like, who cares? <laughs> uh, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> what? I mean, you play Spider-Man? Oh, I mean... No, I don't mean were that. Were you trying to accomplish I don't mean that. something? I've, I've actually heard it's a fantastic game, but, like, <laughs> is the difficulty level of the game what matters? Uh, I... I mean, to someone, Maybe. I mean, if we didn't feel a sense of accomplishment in gaming, why would we do it? Like, that's that's the part of our brain that it, you know, lights up. That's the whole point of it, as far as I can tell. Yeah. It's to make you feel yeah. like you achieved something. We literally have achievements. That's what we actually call them. Yeah, I <laughs> guess I guess the the hidden nature of... The difficulty change is the annoying part because that's like, what i'm talking there's a, about there's a billion games that will do suggested sure difficulty changes yep or even you can manually adjust it like um back to sea of stars there's a, a whole class of items that as far as i can tell exists as a way of adjusting the difficulty curve so i stubbornly refused to equip any of them um which <laughs> made things just take longer as far as i can tell to go back again i probably just wouldn't bother but um Doing it automatically, I guess, is what yeah. kind of bugs me about it because it's a matter of time. That has also until, existed, but it's usually revealed to the player. Yeah, it's a matter of time until they just don't. 
until they just yes. release the game. And because remember, uh, what the goal of the developer is is to make sure the player has a good time, right? Yeah. And if they're going to do episodic episodes, they need to make sure that you don't get stuck. So I could totally see them shipping a game like this, where even if you can toggle it off, it's enabled by default. And I just, I, um, I don't know. It just feels like too much handholding to me. Like, I mean, even just the fact that Mario Kart it's Eight just... has the assistance on by default, yeah. you basically can't crash a cart out of the box. Oh. And the process of turning it off is, I couldn't believe how obtuse it was to oh. turn off the assist. Oh. You can't okay. do it from the menu of the game. You have to be in a race and turn it off when the pause met. Why? To Reaper and Float Plane Chat said something that sparked a thought in my mind. Uh, it, they, yeah. they said Ubisoft would make it harder to sell boosts and skips. What about... Yeah, you just had the same thought I did. What if this started being used nefariously where they started crushing you with difficulty... To try to incentivize, like, what do you mean? What if they, I literally got, talked about that like twenty five minutes ago? Yeah, but it's dynamic. Yeah, it's dynamic. So they have they have ideas. They have some I don't know Cambridge Analytica data or whatever on like who you are, how much money you're going to spend on games and stuff, and they push you just enough. If they're like, yeah, this person will probably spend like fifteen bucks on microtransactions to get it to the end of this game, then they'll poke you for fifteen dollars and then let you win. Oh, Sticklier says you can change the auto drive settings from the cart selection screen. Why isn't it on the main menu? I'm I'm sorry. I had to Why look is it, it on up by default. I had to look. Well, no, that's not even my issue. Oh, that is an issue. But I had to look it up. I couldn't find it on the main menu of the game, which is where settings go. Sorry, not sorry. It's still dumb. Oh, man. Yeah, games will also lower difficulty without you knowing if you're having issues yes. playing on hard parts. Yeah, but usually that's still, it's still granular. Like, if you looked into the settings, you could see it there. Whiskey Nerd 88 says Capcom uses this in Resident Evil. After you die too many times in a spot, they lower the enemies and the hit damage. It, it very often communicates that to you. And if it doesn't, it's usually a setting that you can still go manually change yourself. But yeah, this, like, is, this oh has been my a thing God, for you guys, forever. That is not the point. There's people are telling me some people want to use it and some people don't. I, I know. I, okay, I know. <laughs> it none of that matters. The fact is that it's not <laughs> obvious to find. The settings menu is on the title screen of a game. That's where the settings menu is. It feels like a setting, not a like feature on the cart. Yes, it's not a it's not a wheel. I understand it's it's training wheels, but it's like it's not the way that people would think about it. Okay. Linus likes hot dogs, so he hates burgers. <laughs> oh man. Speaking of hot dogs and burgers, should we talk about the next subject? Uh yeah, sure. What is it? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody made the build corner in Lego? Oh, I haven't actually seen this yet. Me neither. Uh are you opening it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's super cute. <sighs> <laughs> oh no way oh that's wow actually that's actually pretty cool that is freaking awesome in awe of the microsoft easy ball i don't even know what that is yeah it was this um this like for kids mouse controller thing that we did a video about a little while ago that is so cool it always blows me away how detailed people can make even a small Lego model when, you know, the pieces are, are so large, right? Like, like this is super recognizably. Yeah. The workshop. Corner. If you showed this to someone, they'd just be like, oh yeah, that's, I that's would have the immediately PC been like, wait, what is that? Is that the workshop corner at work? This is pretty cool. Oh my god, people are still telling me it's a feature of the cart. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Should be a feature of the game. Uh, I know a lot of people, myself included, that have been surprised that they had training wheels on. Um, it's totally a thing. And you should be able to just turn it off at the menu level. Yeah. If you are just all playing the game and no one should be using assists. Yeah. Like it's guys, 
please. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of guys, please. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Google gives everybody two dollars, sort of. Google has oh, agreed wait, no, to. No, guys, a- please. We got to tell you about our sponsors. Oh, okay. Uh, sponsors are Thorum. Um, they're sprinkling some holiday magic. Whiskey barrels, antlers, Damascus steel, World War II rifle stocks, and even meteorites. Thorum turns them into wedding bands and rings. You can measure your ring size using their paper ring sizer, which is free to download from their site. And each ring comes with a free silicone band and a beautiful wooden ring box, making it easy to give as a gift and ready to go in no time. Did you say you need more time? Thorum has got you covered with their new handcrafted watches. They're made with unique materials as well, like 4 billion year old meteorites and Hawaiian koa wood. And they're automatic watches, so no batteries are required ever. With over 10 years of experience and 7,587 happy customers and counting, oh, that's hilarious. I called them out on one of our last ones where they were just like, over X number of customers. So now they've apparently given me an exact number. Brilliant. (laughs) Uh, Forum sure has a nice ring to it. Every ring is handcrafted and ships within one business day without any shipping costs. And for our WAN show viewers, you can get 20% off with the code WAN. We've got a link in the video description. The show is also brought to you by Maximum Settings. Are you trying to game on your 10-year-old laptop? You've got two options. (laughs) Give it to your siblings as a Christmas gift and spend thousands of dollars on a new one. Hey. Or you can use our sponsor, Maximum Settings, to run the newest games on it. Maximum Settings offers high-powered cloud gaming PCs built on Linux Mint for you to rent and game to your heart's content. They recently transitioned from a virtual machine-based cloud gaming service to a purely bare metal solution, which means a smoother, higher-performance gaming experience. The best part? Maximum Settings doesn't distribute computer resources to multiple people at once, so you can live out your Grinch fantasy by having a PC dedicated to just you. They even have computers running 7900 XT graphics cards for that sweet, sweet 4K gaming. The process is simple. Just pick the PC you want, and within two to five minutes, your cloud gaming PC will be ready. So hop on the cloud gaming trend today and check out Maximum Settings at the link down below. Finally, the show is brought to you by Green Man Gaming. Do you worry Santa might forget about you this holiday because you've been particularly naughty? Why am I the one on screen? Well, don't fret. <laughs> Our sponsor, Green Man Gaming, is not going to leave you behind. No, put on, put on, no, okay, come on. <laughs> Many, like me, oh, what? No, I'm not naughty. I'm not naughty. Look, I'm not in any knots at all. Oh, sorry. Our sponsor, Green Man Gaming, is not going to leave you behind. Many titles from 2023 are on sale at record low prices, or you can go back to some great older titles from Bethesda, Capcom, 2K, and more. Right now, you can save 48% on Elden Ring. Red Dead 2 is 74% off. Whoa. Or maybe you want to save 20% on the award-winning Alan Wake 2. But we're not done letting GMG cook. If Fun with Friends is more your cup of tea, then Overcooked is up to 83% off the series. Great game. As an official PC game retailer, Green Man Gaming works directly with over 1,300 developers and publishers, ensuring that all the keys they offer are 100% legit and you will be supporting the creators. Life is good on Green Man Gaming's nice list. The sale ends January 5th, so go and wrap some savings at the link down below. What is with those cursed pictures of me? (laughs) That is super weird. That's genuinely some crazy sales. All right, it's time for some merch messages. Dan, hit me. I feel like half... I feel like half the merch messages today are just going to be people Dan was, Dan attacking us for our takes. Repeatedly yelling at Linus, saying that he's naughty, and then Linus told Dan to hit him, and I'm feeling very weird. <laughs> I've got the cuffs on the shelf. I mean, uh, <laughs> you've been naughty, Linus? Let me get my stockings. Oh, no. <laughs> I, got some, I got some extra sandals for you. Uh, <laughs> hey oh DLL uh, any updates on the LTT cable management clip availability my yeah. stand up desk is jonesing from some magnetically held cable runs to tame the mess I don't have any to sell Me you too. but we did set up Electroboom with a bunch of them nice nice uh, next year if you got like a $25 backpack credit for example you will be able to buy magnetic cable management stuff with it if you wanted cool um, I had someone ask literally that question in Philip Chat. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I did. But earlier in the show, someone was yeah. like, will I be able to use this on that? No, the timing was not random. 
Um, it was a combination of that we can't have things on our books forever, and we wanted to make sure that there was some very compelling stuff cool. to check out yeah. with it if you know people didn't see anything that, that they were interested in today. Sweet. Yeah. Hi, DLL. I'm attending CES for the first time as a PM with significant purchasing power. I'm in my mid-twenties, introverted, and don't drink, but have been invited to several after-parties with vendors. Do you have any tips? Go. Yep. Talk to people. Uh, try Neither to find... Neither drink. Yeah, find the quietest corner and talk to, talk to the people who, um, you know, don't make it all business all the time, um, but, like... A lot of people are there to get deals done. That's like kind of why they're there. And you just got to kind of, you got to kind of vibe it out. Like, is this person in working mode or is this person in, uh, I'm so drunk that I can't tell that the waitress is not actually into me mode, oh. you know, right? Like it's, uh, and, and some people are in one mode and some people are in the other mode and some people are somewhere in between the modes, uh, but you can get a lot of work done. You know, just having conversations, making connections, you know, uh, just it never came naturally to me either. A, a huge part of, you know, why uh, we have a leadership team that handles all outbound communications to anyone but you guys is that I just don't I'm not just it's not really a people person. I um, <laughs> what <laughs> I just <laughs> some of my calls with companies, I just. I probably need that at some point. <laughs> I told you about the most recent one, right? Where I like, I thought it was to re-sign a contract and yeah, then it wasn't. And I was just like, why are we even here? <laughs> it's like, I just wanted to talk to you. Why? Yeah. Like, call, call I'm not it. that great. <laughs> <laughs> we, we really don't need to know each other, but okay. Um, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all car in twitch says do people still fall for the flirty waitress routine i've never seen it happen personally do you leave dude. your house dude I, I that's the whole routine that's like most of modern civilization as far as i can tell is i have a friend sex. friend group that has a <laughs> large amount of oh man female waitresses at least when we were they have a up. large I'm amount not, of female waitresses that friend group does so they run they run a restaurant at one point in time they were the no, entire I, staff I, of I, one I, restaurant no, yes. I, I was pretending to misunderstand um, you anyways Lord. i i don't i don't know if any of them still work in that industry or not but uh they made bank back then like tons of money and it was off of that strategy alone so like yeah it works it definitely works they made more money than like everyone I knew. Like it was a big deal. Yep. And the main, uh, 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 like huge demographic of people that they would make money from was when there was like a group of dudes going out to eat and one of them wanted to like show off to their friends and like appear cool to the like waitress person. That was like totally it. So like sports nights, trying to, trying to like be flirty, but with the whole group so that they're like fighting against each other and stuff. Totally a thing. And people eat it up. Just like microtransactions. <laughs> like microtransactions. They'll, they'll believe, so that's what tipping is to you. They'll believe whatever. There you go. Luke's hot takes. Tipping is microtransactions. <laughs> Actually, I think microtransactions are the ones that happen continuously, and I don't think that's typical at a restaurant, Luke. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know what kind of restaurants you, you go to. You, but. you could load up the game more than one time. You could go back to the restaurant multiple times. It is what it is. Um, at a bar, your tab stays open. Mm, that's true. Got him. That's true. Got him. Um, Casper asks, hey, I noticed you take your audio seriously with, you know, home theater, headphones, but I see a distinct lack of... Um, Linus using monitor speakers for ear freedom at his house gaming setup or at work. What speakers are best for people who can't wear headphones for long because their ears get hot and sweaty? Well, I don't find that my Open ears get back. hot and sweaty with Open the HD back. 600s, yes. so it's not a problem for me. I used to be a speakers at my desk guy. I, I had the Eclipse Pro Media Ultra 5.1s. Uh, before that, I had a pretty cool pair of our set of monsoons. Um, I also tried out the Creative Gigaworks back in the day. Uh, not because I, you know, 
that was so unimaginative that I could only know of, you know, computer brands for speakers, but because that was a lot easier to hook up back then. Yeah. Uh, later on, I picked up a Kef set with an Onkyo receiver that I ran as my surround setup at my gaming setup at Yvonne's parents' place. Like I was always a speakers guy. And then I had a kid. And my kid was not a good sleeper and I am 100% converted to headphones and speakers don't exist for me. I shouldn't say they don't exist. I still have a pair of Corsair SP2500s just sitting on my desk. Um, Occasionally, Yvonne and I will do a conference call from my desk at the office or in the office at home, in our office room at home. Um, And so I'll put on the speakers because it's hard to share headphones unless I had two pairs of headphones, which I don't. But that's it. And the SP2500s are fine. They're okay. I wouldn't recommend them because I don't know how they compare to something more modern, but they were like decent back then. And I actually have the same ones on my desk at work because they were just speakers that nobody was going to need for anything. And so I grabbed them and they are better than the built-in ones in my monitor. Yeah, I'm still running my Corsair speakers because I also am headphones 99% of the time. And when it needs to be speakers, they're definitely more than good enough so it is what it is last one i got for you here keep the content going happy holidays any updates on the old i thought it was going to end there i was like oh thanks that was easy it's not a question (laughs) any updates on the old pc equipment signature lottery i think we're waiting to release the last video in the series which has taken far longer than we'd like because it was techtober and etc 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 there's always there's always reasons things take longer than we'd like we try but um it's one of those things where if we don't push hard enough you guys are mad that it takes too long and if we push too hard you're mad because like we're crunch or something i so whatever we're just going to get it done when it's done um but we have another video coming in the series and then i think we were planning to do it after but then, I don't know, maybe we'll just get lazy and kill it. We'll, we'll see. If people are into it, then yeah, we're, I guess we're down. I, I, maybe that's it. Maybe I, we should just be gauging like community interest. So for, for those of you who are wondering, um, what they're talking about is all the things from the uh, tech, tech shop. Uh, we had talked about like s- having me painstakingly sign all of them, destroying my wrist, and then... Um, putting them up for sale on lttstore.com for a fixed price. So for five bucks, you might get a GPU. It is like a loot box. You might get a GPU that like works or you might get a GPU that doesn't work or you might get a broken motherboard or you might get like a serial cable. Like it could be anything, <laughs> but it'll be like signed. It's like a piece of memorabilia or something like that. We thought it'd be kind of cool, uh, but maybe it's just dumb. I'm not sure. Oh, you want more topics now, Dan? Yeah. Because we can do topics. You better. Um, I don't know. Are these mostly boring? Uh, yeah. Oh, Steam lets users hide embarrassing games. Mm. Finally. Sort of. I mean, that was the only reason that I didn't buy them. <laughs> the new Steam client beta is adding several quality of life changes, including finally allowing users to mark games in their library, or even prior to purchase, as private and hide them from other people. This will hide players' ownership, in-game status, playtime, and activity in that game. So you no longer have to worry about the social awkwardness of having, you know, 400 hours in Motorboat Simulator or whatever the case may be. Waifu games sales go through the roof. Yeah. The new client will also allow items in the shopping cart to sync across devices. Cool. Nice. The Last of Us multiplayer game was canceled. I don't think I really have a ton to say about that. Uh, did you want to do the Google gives everyone $2 bit? Yeah. I'm going to enter the washroom then. Uh, okay. Google has agreed to a settlement of $700 million to end a lawsuit filed by all 50 state attorney generals over this one, that one, that one. Got it. Uh, uh, all the, the, the state attorney general has... This is written very oddly. The state attorney's general have framed this as a major victory for consumers. However, Google has admitted to no wrongdoing and the settlement only guarantees a minimum payout of $2 per user with larger payouts going to users who've spent more on the app. I think that wouldn't include microtransactions within games. I think that would just be actually money that you spent on the Play Store itself, just to be clear. Uh, Google has also agreed to simplify side loading for at least the next five years. 
and allowed third-party app installations on new phones for at least seven years leading to concerns about oem bloatware that's weird that there's like a time limit on it but oh well in addition google's user choice billing system which was in the pilot phase will be expanding to allow developers to offer alternative payment methods however google will still be able to charge them a service fee of 26 percent as opposed to the play store's 30 percent cut so it's four 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 percent off hooray uh Epic CEO Tim Sweeney expressed dissatisfaction with the ruling and said that he and Epic would continue to pursue their own antitrust case against Google. Attorneys general is technically a plural word. It's a confusing title. Wow, that's that's odd. My dyslexia hated that. Um, that $2 is like a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Yeah. Um, it did say $2 minimum. I really wonder what it's going to be for people that have spent a decent amount on the store. Like, okay, if it's $2 per user, uh, if someone has spent $10, do they get, uh, what would that be? $2.60? Is that how that works? Uh, is it 4% instead of 30? Maybe that's it. I don't know. I don't know what the scale is going to be like after the $2, but the main reason why I wanted to talk about it on the show is often case with these things, you have to like claim it. It doesn't just come to you automatically. Um, and you might as well get your two bucks. So I'm trying to tell everyone so they can take $2 from Google or more. Go get your money. I don't know when it's going to be available, but go get it. Um, I find a lot of the times these lawsuits, they don't end up hitting the company that hard because uh, people don't claim it so yeah go claim it hit him hard do another topic dan i don't know if that was one topic or was it like three topics because you skipped most of them uh oh, do we have mean, any I thought, left i thought you mean that i just did but you mean in this in this grouping yeah i, I mean, think we did two okay um do you have any more that you want to talk about if not i'll just turn the lights off i could try to do one more let's see here um I'll, I'll do two kind of rapid fire. VR declines while Meta spends billions. Sales of VR and AR devices declined by 40% this year, according to industry research uh, firm Circana. The entire market for AR and VR devices was only estimated to be at $1.1 billion last year and is now down to $664 million. Meta has continued to lose over $3 billion on its VR division every quarter of 2023, and the Meta Quest 3 is suspected to, by some analysts to be selling at a per-unit loss based on its likely material and labor costs. Womp womp. No one cares about VR and AR anymore. It's all about that AI, baby. Let's go. Everybody's moved on. But I'm still taking home this like VR haptic vest for the holidays to play with it. Oh, that's actually I'm tough. kind of into it again. It's just really expensive, I think. And everybody's broke. It's it's a really very expensive thing to be a part of. Um, th uh, I'll do another one really quick just because I find this interesting. I'm very interested to hopefully see a follow-up to this to see how well it did. Uh, but consulting firm using AI to reduce layoffs. This year, London-based consulting firm Deloitte hired 130,000 new employees, but also found that reduced demand for certain services meant that they might need to eliminate thousands of existing positions. Instead, Deloitte wants to experiment with AI to assess the skills of those at-risk employees and create a strategy to move them into greater demanded roles. Interesting. 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 I can't even imagine operating at the kind of scale oh, yeah. where you're making a decision about sort of rehoming someone or no longer working together. Um, in the thousands yeah based on anything other than that individual person yeah you know like to, to 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 have so many people working at a company that you take the bucket of people who are in this department doing this thing who might be useful doing other things and split them into smaller buckets for reassignment is unfathomable to me i don't i don't i don't want to do that you heard it here first 
Linus Media Group and its associated companies will never be that big because I didn't want to, not because I wasn't good enough at managing it. There are, there are, <laughs> but also because I didn't want to. Pains and sores and frustrations with getting bigger as a company. Oh yeah, definitely. That sounds that sounds awful, honestly. Yeah. Um, there was one other thing that I had wanted to do. Yeah, Apple may be investigated over Beeper. A bipartisan group of lawmakers has requested that the U.S. Department of Justice investigate Apple for potentially anti-competitive conduct. Really? Huh. <laughs> After Apple repeatedly broke Beeper's Android-based iMessage service by closing the loopholes it relied on, DOJ lawyers reportedly met with representatives of Beeper last week, and the FTC has publicly stated it will be taking a closer look at claims by large industry gatekeepers that competition threatens security or privacy. Because it turns out that was f***ing horse sh the whole time. I think there can be some legitimacy here. There can, but this ain't it. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know enough about iMessage, but there, there can be legitimacy. It is there. definitely possible to encrypt a thing. Yes. It is definitely possible for encrypted thing to pass through other thing. Can you determine how something must be encrypted and decrypted, though? As long as it... Can a government decide how you do your security? I think that the government can decide it could have been done. Because mm. it, it could have been done. There's plenty of precedent for that. By Apple's logic, you know... I, but then the Mac government shouldn't is then... support email because it might have to pass through someone else's ser <laughs> server. Like, honestly, though. Yeah, I, I just... Security is an interesting one. Sure. I don't know enough about iMessage to talk about it too much. But um, As far as anyone can tell, Beeper legitimately had just found a workaround so that it never left Apple's care. Pun intended. Uh, Beeper has officially announced that it will no longer attempt to crack iMessage on the basis that each time that the service falters, it impacts their credibility. Instead, they will use a method that they hope Apple can tolerate existing using a combination of a jailbroken iPhone and a Mac or Linux computer to register an Android phone number for iMessage through the Beeper mini app. Beeper has also made the code for their original bypass method open source, which is super cool and could undermine any of Apple's arguments that this was, in fact, due to security and not that due to like them. Definitely why they would do that. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I think it's time for WAN Show After Dark. All right. I'll help. You just wanted to do it. 8%. Oh, he just turned it off. Oh, my God. Gosh. I kind of like that, to be honest. Okay, turn it off. You want to turn it off? What's 8%? <laughs> really? Could this be bad for epilepsy? Oh, sorry. Yeah. 12 cycles per second. Is that a thing? I believe that's one of the triggers, yeah. Oh. Is that 8%? Doesn't look like 8%. Better it be looks 8%. like 8% to me. That's 8%. Okay, good. It's definitely 8%. I hope, ah. it, I hope it was 8%. I don't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just making it up. It just felt right. Uh, All right. What are we up to? I'm right, going to do some merch messages, I guess. Let's do it. Hey, Linus. Sorry about the wing. Not my fault. Why are you sorry then? Sounds yeah. like it might have been your fault. Yeah. Admission so. of guilt. Yeah. Are you planning to do a follow-up daily usage video on the Fairphone 5? What are your impressions so far? Been eyeing that as a potential upgrade. Yes. <laughs> I've been daily driving it for... Uh, there's a bit of a gray zone in between about when the LG Wing video came out and sort of the week after that where I still had some stuff I hadn't transitioned over to the Fairphone. But my intention is not just to daily drive the Fairphone for a review, but also to make the Fairphone my new Note 9, if that makes sense. Like my, my fallback, if whatever it is that I'm using right now doesn't have something on it um this is like the one that will definitely have like all my 2fas or you know whatever else like this is like the one that i can use if i'm in between other phones that i'm reviewing or something so that's my goal however i'm having some issues um some things are little like when i'm watching uh a tv in the dark 
I don't know what it is. The ambient light sensor uh, kind of struggles sometimes, so it'll go bright in the dark and bright in the dark and bright in the dark. And this one's really annoying. So right now I have my ringer off, and the reason for that is that if you guys uh, would like to do a little experiment with me, uh, watch this. Luke? Yeah. Um, I am going to turn my ringer down to the minimum volume while still being above zero. Okay? So I'm now at the minimum... Okay, so that's off. That's the minimum volume above the lowest setting, right? Okay. Go ahead and text me. Or like Teams, it doesn't matter. Just just notify my oh, phone of something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can send anything, it doesn't have to be a That is really, really that's very loud. loud. <laughs> That's that's quite loud. And it's it's those kinds of little quality of life things that are making it kind of hard to like it. There's a lot to like about the philosophy, but um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've reviewed a phone, and I just kind of assumed they all just kind of worked at this point. The Fairphone proved me wrong. Um, oh, people want the loudest setting. I mean, sure. Uh, all right. Hit me again, Luke. Uh, okay. Give me one second. I've Are actually busy been typing... texting other people. No, I'm actually busy texting you. Oh, but give me a second. It's oh. okay. I just need to send it. Well, it's it's fine. It's you're gonna. I'm gonna send it to you. You're gonna see it in a moment. What? No, that that, 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 that okay. Just. I think it's not bad. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> You're making like 10,000 people wait for you to send this text message. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to, but then... So, wait, that's max volume? I think so. So there's just no difference? Yeah, I'm at max now. Is that actually the notification volume that you're adjusting? Oh, crap. You goof! No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, wow. no, the, the ring of notification wow. one is, is down wow. at the bottom. Yeah, but it wasn't at the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, do it, one, do it more time. One more time, one more time. Okay, yeah, no, here's Max, here's Max. Oh, yeah, that's another thing that's been kind of annoying. So it gets louder, which is, not, I guess, a feature. Not enough louder for it to go up the entire bar, you know? Yeah, so it's... Uh, that minimum volume is still very high. Do you want to compare it to mine? Sure. Because I, I don't think I've actually Hold on. tried this. I just realized, though, there's zero. So there's zero without it being silent. Try one more time. Maybe there's a, maybe, maybe 0% is audible, which was not intuitive to me, but hey. No, that's fine. Yep. So that was minimum volume on this phone, which is a problem for me because if I don't have my ringer on, I don't notice things because I am distracted doing things. And if I have my ringer on, but too loud, it can't be on when I'm shooting and if it's not on when I'm shooting, I won't remember to turn it back on when I'm done shooting. So I basically just don't find out about people messaging me until later when I look at my phone anymore, uh, which is not working. Why are you saying, why, why do your messages say penis? <laughs> Grow up. Okay, let's see how loud your minimum is. I, I should hold so it in front of my mic though, because this mine, is... Mine only has seven volume levels. Yeah, I think mine only has about that. Oh, okay. Like on Samsung, I know that um, for media volume anyway, there's a third-party app that I installed that gives you like... Are you holding you the like, same way you're holding your phone? No, not yet. That gives you way more granular control. Um, I don't know if there's an equivalent for this. I haven't tried to solve this yet, to be very clear, but there's just been some annoyances. Yeah, Pretty quiet. That's super reasonable. Yeah. That's the kind of thing that I could leave on to make sure that I notice things, yeah. but it... You know, if it goes off in the middle of a take, then I can still continue to do it. We honestly don't even need to play full volume. It's like reasonably loud. It's what you'd expect. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Anyways. Hey, DLL, first time listener, long time caller. Oh, hold on. I should say there are a lot of things I really like about it, though. Like the fact that you could like kill someone with it. Yeah. Like, feel that's, how a, heavy that's it is. good. Feels many generations ago. Yeah, it's as big as my wife's in a case, but it doesn't have a case on it. Yeah, it is heavy. Yeah, it's, it's thick. 
It's like, oh, you know? Yeah. It's fair, though. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Dan. <laughs> First time listener, long time caller. They never said great phone. They said fair phone. <laughs> That's a good line. I should use that. How many like fair <laughs> use jokes do you have in the in the script? As long as they're not free use jokes, we should get away with it. <laughs> huh. <laughs> the best part is he can't take any kind of moral high ground because he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> we can't react at all, can we? <laughs> I mean, uh, Luke, please explain it to me. I no, don't know. No, no, <laughs> I don't no, know. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, first uh. time listener, long time caller. What are you looking forward to gaming wise in 2024? I was hoping you'd have something for this. Is there any games you're looking forward to? Is there a follow up to Crosscode? Anything I want to like try. That? I want to. Oh, uh, yeah. When's Radical Fish's next game coming out? Uh, the cold fish. I'm one of those people where I just like I don't really follow things as they're coming up. I just I just wait for them to arrive and pleasantly surprise <clears throat> me. Um, I <laughs> games Project Terra working title. Um, our list of games is short. We've been around for over ten years. Something something. Okay, yeah. Nope. I I don't know. At some point, new action RPG. Yeah, it sounds great. I'm really excited to play that. Um, eventually at some point, I don't know. I heard Halo Infinite's really good again, and I want to, I, I, I'm down to play some more. Oh, Feels hard man. to believe, but wait, I'm down. I don't think I'm allowed to talk about what it is, but I tried a new piece of hardware oh. that blew my fucking mind. I swear to you. Okay. You've, have you gamed with Ploof before? No. Okay. I don't think so. Very respectable gamer. Yeah. Dude's a gamer. Yeah. I can see okay. it. We were shooting. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't catch all of it on camera, but some definitely caught some of it on camera. But we're shooting this video, and I'm putting together combos of just like off the rack, scopeless headshots. I don't think I have encountered a piece of hardware that has changed my gaming performance like this what? that I can remember. What? What? I know. What? I was like, dude, I'm Dees. Like, I know how to operate Wazda and a mouse. But you know I'm not this good. And he's like, dude, I know. What? But it was the same for me. He actually went on a trip to try this thing a little while ago before it was sent to us in the studio. And he was like, brother, I was on some wireless mouse on a tablecloth just putting together kill streaks." What? Is it, is it like, does you it, can't does it guess like... it's, it's embargoed. I can't talk about it yet, but there's a video coming. Okay. So I'm like not allowed to guess. This, um, we're talking multiplayer games. There's no cheating, <sighs> but I just, I couldn't believe how much it changed things. So I'm, I want to guess so bad, but I won't. I won't I'm watch. definitely excited to jump in some like Halo Infinite public lobbies. Wait, do you have it? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I haven't taken it home though. I was kind of thinking, should, should I, should I just like buy everything at retail for my house from now on? What do you think? No. Well, like, okay. I mean, sure. There's the obvious reasons why I shouldn't. Like if there's one sitting collecting dust in a warehouse here already, then yeah. maybe I should just borrow it and play with it instead of like buying another one. Yeah. But also I feel like it would make for some good c content because it will force me to encounter some of the same challenges that other people would around you I know, think availability. As, as a piece of content doing that sometimes might be good, but I don't think you should do it always. I think it could be an interesting approach to certain things though. I just feel like sometimes we end up with kind of dumb stuff in the videos because okay, here's an example. When we put together the land center, we bought a lot of it. And the stuff that I bought has a way different rationale behind it than the stuff that we got. For example... So I, I, think, I think you approached it in two different ways. Is this sure. a more recommendation style video or is this a like showcase Ferrari version type of... Blah, 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 no, blah. it's just for... It's just for like what we're going to talk about. Like we, we, we went with 3080s from EVGA. 
because I thought it was pretty cool to build you know gaming PCs with EVGA GPUs for the last time. Yeah. And so I bought those. What, what what EVGA is going to like send me GPUs? No. Um, and so you know there's a cool story there. But then for our SSDs, we went with these like Gen five T seven hundreds from Crucial because that was what Crucial had in their like sampling inventory not because there's any compelling reason to use that and in fact we ended up with yeah, that's fine. the build just kind of imbalanced because of that and we talked about it in the video we basically said yeah we recognize that these yeah, are totally as long overkill. as that's addressed in the video i think it's fine but i feel like there's been a um i don't know man there's been like a a, a new resentment around us doing crazy projects with stuff provided by sponsors in our videos and if we just bought it then maybe people wouldn't be mad or do you think people are just mad and it doesn't matter i think people are still gonna be mad because hmm. then they're gonna be mad that you had the money to buy it um i mean that's sad yeah just means there's like nothing i can do about it then in your mind i think so i think there's always gonna be a certain pool of haters okay so tell me this hmm. You know, we're going to have the video coming on the 115-inch TV. Um, do you think it would have made any difference to the video if we hadn't paid for it? We unbox it. We yes, like, actually, in this case, because I think a very interesting story is how you got it. Okay. So then shouldn't part of the story of any project we do be how we got it? To a certain degree, yeah. And if how we got it is we dialed a phone number and someone put it in the mail for us um isn't that just boring yeah okay so if it needs it then i don't know yeah like i i i think that's part of the story if you're like we're gonna try to do the most insane home theater room ever and we're getting all this stuff sourced for us and it's gonna be balling sure i don't think you need that prequel story right i see but I think with the TV, yes, it's like the most insane TV I've ever seen in my entire life and watching it in person was wild. But I think that story actually helps that video a lot. Like the getting this is actually wildly difficult if you're not in China TV is like an interesting story. You can't find this in North America. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. Tech and photo enthusiast and float plane says, I think buying it yourself may help review it differently than it being handed to you and told the price for it. But yeah. like I, I, I go out of my way to review things as though I am the yeah. customer for it. Like when I, like I took a bunch of flack for this. I talked about this last week for the PlayStation portal. I'm not going to buy a PlayStation portal. I could have unlimited money and I would never buy a PlayStation portal because I'm not interested in the PlayStation yeah. portal. But I reviewed it from the perspective of someone with a PlayStation who wants to play games, their PlayStation games specifically, away from their TV. And I think that you're, you're never going to be able to bridge that gap between people who can understand that I'm trying to review this for the customer for whom it might be applicable um, and people who don't understand that. I, I, just, I just don't think there's any way to bridge that. Um, yeah, Fa Fast Philly says, "I yeah, Luke, I think if there's an interesting story like the TV, it should be included. I mean, could the could the story be as interesting as, you know, yeah, they provided it, but getting it exported think, was a challenge. I was going to say, honestly, I think even if you got the TV for free supplied, the how you got it and how exclusive it is and hard it is to get out of China and, and some of the details that I know about it that might be exclusives for the video, so I'm not going to say, I'm not sure, um, those things would have been interesting anyways. I don't know. But I do think there's an angle, like if your next computer, if you were like, I bought everything for my own computer, I had to like, I don't know. The thing is like, the decisions more. We buy a lot of stuff. Yeah. I, and my whole thing up until now has been, that should never matter to the content of the video. Yeah. Like I've talked to you about that extensively. You yeah. should, one of my, aside from disclosure, my philosophy this whole time has been that from the conclusion of the video and everything that we say about the product, you shouldn't be able to tell if this is a brand that sponsors us and sends us anything that we want, a brand that doesn't talk to us at all, and we have to buy absolutely everything, 
or anywhere in between. You should never be able to tell. Mm -hmm. Has always been our philosophy. And in some cases, we've even swung a little bit hard the other way. Um, like, I think we've gone pretty hard on Intel, for example, at times, knowing that as a longtime sponsor, we're going to be under increased scrutiny for the way that we treat them. But that doesn't seem to have... I don't know. It doesn't seem to have really like resonated. That doesn't seem to work anymore. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the what's the new meta right now. I don't know. Luke, do you still watch The Yard? Currently binging the whole show mm -hmm. and love whenever you guys come up. Hope uh, the barn was empty though. <laughs> uh, didn't really watch The Yard so much as listen to it. Um, and I, I started again recently, but we'll also probably quit very soon uh i i started listening to it because i was like way overweight and needed to go on lots of walks and and do things that would take a long time and i was bored because there was very little that i could actually do in order to get the cardio in so i'd listen to it while i would go on like walks or, or do whatever cardio stuff um and then i got more in shape and was more in like weight room situations and was less interested in listening to the yard so i stopped and then recently i got very not very sick but i got sick for a very long time and it stuck in my like lungs and whenever i uh would breathe deeply i'd start coughing which made weight room difficult so i've been walking again so i've been listening again but now i think i'm sort of over that so i'm planning to go to the gym again tomorrow in which case i'll probably stop listening again it's a great podcast i just don't usually like sit there and listen to a podcast for that long um so there's very few podcasts that i that i frequent but whenever i want a podcast i do come back to it i can think of one podcast you listen to every week i do sort of listen to this i guess yeah yeah it's here i mean sometimes i can't tell if you're listening to yourself talk but you hear you hear me i think most of the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> at least dan talks less than i do I can't even see you. <laughs> yeah, that might be an improvement I'm doing, to the I, setup. Yeah, I'm doing other things. I'm distracted. I barely listen to this. Yeah, you right. want me to turn around? I mean, I prefer to be like in another room. Um, let's see. Where are we? Merry Christmas, LLD. Out of the three of you, who is the hardest to choose gifts for and why? I'm impossible. Me too. My aunt got me a gift that she says is perfect and I will love it. And that is the biggest red flag because the more perfect someone thinks a gift is and the more they think I'm going to love it, the, the more, more certain I am that it's going to be f***ing terrible. Yeah. And I'm going to have to like say thank you. And because this is someone who comes to my house a lot, keep it forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like clutter and I consider most gifts to be clutter. Like literally go on to a website and go to the gift ideas tab i promise you every single garbage thing clutter. there is manufactured garbage it will be thrown in the garbage my family is like frustrated with me because we're all supposed to come up with christmas lifts and i couldn't come up with one for myself because i couldn't find anything i wanted <laughs> and i i like i had a few people just say like well you're like not getting anything then and i was like yeah that's fine. That's cool. In fact, if we could just not do the gift exchange and I could not buy anything, that would be great. No, I got I got things for everyone else and I and I, I don't mind. I just like I I legitimately really tried. I took like a whole evening and was like, yeah, but you also do prefer if you just don't have to deal with that shit. So, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Merry Christmas by the way. I got you nothing. Yeah, nice. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was there was one year a bunch of employees came together to get Linus something. And it was like actually pretty cool. Yeah, but I, was, uh, I remember being like, eh. you know what? It, it was pretty out. cool. They got me a badminton racket and they signed the sleeve. Everyone signed the sleeve. And um, it ended up being a really good racket. Not because the people organizing it had any idea how to pick a badminton racket or what my tastes were because it really come at a certain point it's not just higher quality. They're all the same quality. It just comes down to personal preference and your play style. They happened to pick this kind of spiritual successor to the one that I really liked that was EOL and I couldn't get more of anymore because they do break. <laughs> um, and so not only did I use that one, but I actually bought two or three more of them 
for my racket bag so that I'd have mul multiple rackets strung because if you break your strings in the middle of a game and then you switch rackets, it can be a little discombobulating. Um, so that was a that was a smash Fun hit. Bit. Hey! Pun intended. Yeah. Um, pretty much, uh, oh, there was the keyboard one. That was cool. But that was a display item. I think some people legitimately thought I was going to daily drive it and I was like, guys, it has no Windows key. Like it, it, was, it was a Model M that was also like signed by everybody. It was pretty cool. Yeah. In both cases, I warned the people organizing it. I was like, ah. Don't feel bad if. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is a great idea. But. <laughs> just a warning. I wanted to get Luke uh, emotional damage, but I ended up not making it happen. I'm very sad. <laughs> okay. Was, it was a funny idea. Oh, yeah. Hi, DLL. Uh, regarding the Lux backpack, are you ordering small batches or are they actually made to order? If it is a small batch, have you placed in the first order for them? It's small batches, and I am not 100% sure if we place the first order. As you might imagine, we've got some back and forth to do with our backpack supplier right now. So I think we're working on getting all of that resolved. And once we do, we very much do intend to move forward with the Lux backpack. We, we're going to fulfill those orders. Um, but in terms of how many we're ordering and, you know, what the scheduling for all of that looks like and the payment scheduling and blah, blah, everything. That's all businessy stuff that I'll let Taryn and Nick and Yvonne deal with. Have you, I'm oops, just having sorry. visions. <laughs> probably just don't to, interrupt the vision. You should probably go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My vapors. <laughs> uh, have you thought about doing the whole home RGB, using RGB strips to have exterior lights programmable for any holiday? Yes, but the only justification I could possibly have for doing that would be to make a video, and I don't really feel like doing that as a video. I, you know... It does sound like a kind of boring video, unless you bundled it in with other things. Yeah. Or if the end result was incredible. Yeah, but I... Then that's great, but like, do I really want to invest that kind of labor hours into a light display yeah. on my house i don't yeah. think so i think it's going to end up looking weird because if it needs to be incredible then i think they'd need to take shape and for them to take shape it would be different shapes for, for the different holidays then you just have leds that aren't on often which wouldn't look good i don't know hi dll long time enjoyer of the show I'm a junior in a physics lab at Stanford, and I'm applying to, for, uh, applying to Google for a quantum information internship. I'm curious what your technical thoughts are on quantum computers. Uh, they asked for our non-technical thoughts, which Sorry, is good. Sorry, I got, I got st uh, stuck on the which years. Which is great. Yeah, technical thoughts were going to be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. uh, you could have tried. My, my <laughs> basic understanding of it is that it sounds absolutely incredible and means absolutely nothing for gamers for the foreseeable no, future so you know for the vast majority of our audience you know this is going to be one of those world changing um shifts in computing but lord only knows how long it's going to take to actually make its way into something that um you know changes your day-to-day -day life well so i'm you know back to what i said before i'm in wait and see mode let's see yeah well i'm very interested in the potentiality of the like encryption bomb have i ever talked to you about that before I think so, yeah. Countries, organizations, individuals yeah. are all like collecting encrypted files because there's this theory that once quantum com computing gets to a certain degree, it'll just be able to like remove encryption extremely easily on basically anything. Um, so there's countries hoarding like incredible amounts of other countries' encrypted data, like just monstrous amounts of data. Um, that has been fairly easy to intercept for a long time, but has been heavily encrypted. So what was the point? But they've just been collecting it because maybe we can unencrypt it eventually. And that future might happen with quantum computing. Um, so. Good luck, everybody. <sighs> yeah, pretty much. Hello, WAN crew. Question for Linus. What are some of the oddest or most interesting problems that you have had with your smart home setup? Uh, uh, dropout reasons, things uh, not talking to each other. Some of my Ecobees drop out for no apparent reason. I even went as far as to get a different... I thought maybe it was like a weird ubiquity thing or something. I went as far as to bring back one of the Ruckus APs and just put in a central location and connect all the Ecobees to that and nothing but that. And I still have one, two, that, that are dropping out for no apparent reason they don't just drop out like i go all the way to the console and like i can see the access point 
yeah, or the SSID in the list and I can connect and I can put in the password. And it, just, it just won't connect until I rip it off the wall, put it back on the wall to power cycle. And it's just like, why? Just freaking why? It just, it's Wi-Fi. It's supposed to work at this point. Um, so other than frustrations, no. Uh, <laughs> not that interesting. What's up, boys? What's been your favorite <laughs> WAN show topic this year? You know, I was... Okay. What I just, I just read them like they mean you know, right? You go. Is it going to be ad block <laughs> equals piracy, or uh, you know what? What are we going to go with some what, some of the classics? I don't think that's even from this year. That was ages ago. Really? I, I don't think really? that's from this year. When was? When did the shirt come out? When was that? Minus tech tips. Oh wow, this is hilarious. Twenty twenty two. Whoever whoever this was, um <laughs> I don't know, changed their mind, I guess. Yeah. Uh yeah, so that was a while ago. Twenty twenty two, yeah. Um I don't know. I feel like this is a bit of a cop out because we've had a similar question that I answered with the same thing, but I think it was the day that we were messing around with Bing Chat. That was really fun. That was fun. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Very nice. Okay. Hi, DLL. I work for an underwater robotics company with a pressure tank. What tech or LTT store item would you want to pressurize to deep ocean depths? What? I love this question so much. What? <laughs> so off the wall. None? <laughs> you wouldn't want a squoosh a, a tech item or an LTT store item? Let's see what happens with the backpack. Like how much? We've cut through how it, deep, but have we really I put mean, it to deep How deep ocean could you put pressure? a water bottle I'm into the sure. ocean? Can the single bottom layer hold up to deep ocean pressures? Can fairly hold up to screw No day. one's broken through it ever yet. <laughs> Jeez. Maybe the deep ocean will. Um... <laughs> Bread. Yeah, full play chat said bread. <laughs> that, that doesn't. Can you deep ocean pressurize a loaf of bread? I it's mean, just gonna. It's water. It's gonna melt. Uh, what? Uh, no. It's the pressures. It's. I don't think. Yeah, I think it would just. It would just go into the. It would seep into it, and then it would also be pressured from the outside. Like it, it would it's be very be, boring. It has to have a cavity inside mm -hmm. it for any any of this to matter at all. Is my understanding? Water bottle. You got to do your water bottle. I mean, that's yeah, just gonna. Just, yeah, everyone knows what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, but at what depth? I don't know. That, but just don't that's take the it, point of an underwater never, robotics laboratory. Dad, it's never gonna get there because it's gonna be full of air. It's gonna float. Neither of you have just fun ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have fun. You don't just like doing stuff I because fun, you want to know things. I have fun vicariously through my children. That is really sad. <laughs> ask, ask them. Ask, that is kind of sad. Ask, ask them what they would want to deep ocean pressurize. Maybe a, maybe a sheep, which is a comment that no, no one's going to understand except for Linus and Dan. <laughs> and it will not be explained. I'll explain it a little. I got a letter from one of my kids' teachers about a gruesome story that they wrote in their creative writing class that involved a sheep being um, nuked from the inside. <laughs> I have good kids. In the If you read the whole thing, it's like... It actually doesn't not make sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kid creativity, but also yeah. like... Yeah, maybe a little far on that one. Yeah, you know, Minecraft, I guess, or something. something. Yeah, yeah, anywho. <laughs> Oh, man. Any updates on the bidet? Yeah, no. Mm. Well, it's nice and easy. Hey, when XE noticed LTT is now a... Dan, uh, what? can you not? You're driving me crazy. What do you want? Really? When XE? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, Dan? You know he's doing... See, look at him. Look at him doing this on purpose. Do you see this? That is the face of a no. That is the face away. of a man doing it on purpose. Is an okay. XC a hockey player look, too? Look at this. Oh no! Hold on. How do I? Oh. How do I F eleven this stupid computer? Okay. When XC. Okay. No. No. That is not what we do. What do we do, Linus? Not that. What do we do? Do it again. Uh, okay. Carry on. Uh, when full stop, XE. <laughs> noticed LTT. 
How would you prefer? You're the writer here. <laughs> Wen.exe. You don't, you, oh, oh why, don't you say ROG as well? ROG no? reboot? Oh, okay, so I can't say exe, but you can say GIF. GIF is correct. <laughs> I don't want to open this debate up again, Tan. <laughs> We're going to fight about this. <laughs> I've always said exe. This is what? like. Are this, you what? actually serious? I thought I, you were, no, no. I thought you were taking the piss. No, I'm gonna take the L on this one. I have always said exe. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Yeah. Why? I don't know. Okay. I is actually those, don't like, know. You read it for a really long time, but no one said it thing? No. Well, I mean, it's ex <laughs> executable. People went oh. like this. Yeah. From being mad at me no, about no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. being mad at Dan about X. I knew we'd have some sort of solidarity on this. <laughs> Ex you executable. You don't, you don't say executable, though. Man, so dude, you're still doing it wrong. Executable, yeah. Dan, X -y. X -y. you know how right no, I have to be for them to side with me, right? Oh, it's yeah. actually, this is oh, yeah. my favorite thing for years, is you just generally automatically win against Linus because people like watching him lose. No, 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 uh, losing is fun. It's, it's entertaining. <laughs> I didn't even know that this was like a thing. What? Like, nobody, nobody says the word ever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they do. Yeah, I've probably said something.exe like a lot of times. I just assumed that both were acceptable. No. <laughs> it still drives me nuts. This that is amazing. That I'm, I'm having like an <laughs> epiphany moment your, here. Your explanation was exe for executable. Yeah. It's easier. But then you don't say executable. You say execute. You don't say Jaffix either. You know? Like what? Jaffix is nothing. That's not anything. <laughs> Jaffix. <laughs> Jaffix entertains format? Yeah, sure. Oh, <sighs> man. Damn, this is uh, no, I this don't. is life altering. Steve, I have to go for a spirit walk. Steve J three D. I don't think he's trolling anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's like swear on my life. I have always said exe. Wow. Um, I feel like I want to okay. pull this. This is weird. This is very weird. Okay, uh, here I'm gonna start texting you some things, and I'd like you to say them out loud. Oh, oh this is brilliant exciting. idea. I, I love um, it. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna make a poll at the same time. I'm gonna lose my uh, my How job over this. You said. <laughs> No, 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 no. We might just have to use AI to find you a new job. Can you find a job for someone whose primary skill is being wrong? I'm, I, I, uh, okay. I'm the, I'm the chief vision officer of Linus Media Group. <laughs> Yeah. You had to wait for him to take a drink, Dan. Thank we you. almost got him. Thank you for that setup. That you was great. You got him. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of myself for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm really interested in the uh, in the results of this poll. Okay, I, I, never... I messaged you. I messaged you. Exe, exe. All right, let's have a look. Let's see. Uh, twenty, roughly twenty percent of people are trolls. PNG. Okay. So you do PNG. Hold not on, hold on. I send him more stuff. Well, see, I would kind of use exe and exe uh, interchangeably occasionally, right? Like I'd never say. <laughs> Right so now. I would never say <laughs> ping, <laughs> even though I kind of want to now. A lot more, to I be like honest. Ping. If you're gonna do one of them, you might as well do ping. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Linus. Could you send this to me as a ping? <laughs> uh, I would just call that a text file. What? TXT. I would just call text. Oh, oh. I thought you. Oh. No, I'm just. I'm sending him common sorry. extensions. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So we have PNG. We have TXT. Which so I, you, you've never said TXT. I would never ever say TXT. I would always so say send it to me in a text, text. file. Yeah. yeah, but how what would if you? What if it's a, a directory? Doc. What do you mean if it's a directory? Like what? What if? What if you are? What? What if you're on the phone with someone, and you're like, okay, uh, file extension. Yeah, like, uh, like CD, CD, whatever, and then just open. I would spell it, obviously. I mean, I would do the same with with exe. I would do the same with exe, right? Uh, okay. All right. Well, I've sent you more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, JPG. Uh, I would say JPEG. Okay. Okay. Well, he's doing. Oh. Okay, so far. Uh, okay, I, I mean, I sent you more. Yeah, so uh, BMP. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? <laughs> I put that in the documentation. Um, <laughs> so BMP, uh, again, I would say bitmap. But, uh, you know, we would spell it if we're talking about it. Uh, oh, any. No! 
or I and I. No. Both interchangeably. No! Yeah, that's an interesting one. Throws it on the ground. Mm. I'm Your learning about myself. Ground. You got an X and a ninny. Do uh, I want I want I want to find more. Yeah. Any really wave. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can I, I try think, one? Can I try uh, one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh sure. man, this is what, uh, you <laughs> this is awful. Yeah, You're always on your one, phone during the show. No, this, oh the one time you can't. Work. The one time you can't find your phone. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay. What'd you send? What'd you send? Uh, Doc X. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. I'm scared now. I was expecting like I gotta be honest because this is something. hilarious. <laughs> All right. No, dot, I'm, I'm using. I'm dot MSI. Ping is all I'm saying now. Ping. Yeah, ping, ping is great. Ping is. I'm keeping that. Dot MSI. Dot, boop, dot MSI. Yeah. Yeah. You just say that. I would say MSI. Okay. Yeah. We need okay. more that it's the be it's also the beginning of the word. But why is it XE? No. Up. Why is it XE and any? Uh, it's not. <laughs> it's, well, no. But like, <laughs> but why those in particular? Because like. You know, PNG or like bitmap, well, right? Well, at least they're letters that conceivably could go together. Whereas, like, because I would boomp, never say, boomp, I yeah, would like, never say yeah. WAN dot executable. That would be weird. But yeah. would you say WAN dot exe? I mean, yeah. you did, right? I Sorry. did, uh, of course. Because I'm just like <laughs> reading it as words. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot that such a thing was possible. <laughs> it's like short form, you know, it's WAN exe. Not wan.exe, which I didn't read, right? Hmm. If you lose the dot, then I don't know. Anyway, I'm canceled. Um, yeah. Uh, way to go, Dan. <laughs> don't worry, you're doing great, Dan. Uh, okay, uh, hit us again. Uh, oh, wait, did we ever actually finish the... Uh, I didn't get to <laughs> finish the question. All right, Jacob's question. Let's, let's, let's get there. Uh, oh, you want me to read it? Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, Noticed LTT is now a sponsor of the McMaster University Baja team. Yeah, what? Would love to hear how that partnership came about and if you'd sponsor more Canadian Baja teams in the future. Um, we had a co-op student here who... Um, was very passionate about this sponsorship opportunity and made a made a case internally for why we should consider it. And so I basically said, you know, from my point of view, um, I leave this to, I believe it was Colton and Taryn who ultimately made the decision. Um, I think Gary was involved as well. And I basically said, okay, I mean, if you guys think there's a good business reason to do this, then do it. And so evidently they did it based on, well, no, this is not the first time finding out about it. It was actually uh, that particular uh, co-op student who came into my office and was like, thank you so much for sponsoring the team. And I was like, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I mean, I definitely had some involvement, I guess, uh, apparently. I hadn't found out about it yet, didn't get my statement um, yet, but, um, you know, I, 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 did, I did yellow light it. You know, I basically said, I'm good if everyone else is good. You guys make the decision, but, uh, you know, you may want to go talk to them about it as well, but our pleasure, I suppose. Um, yeah, no, it's, it should be cool. I th think it looks like a really cool project. A uh, Baja Look. team, they, they build like uh, buggies or something like that, and then they race them. It sounds incredibly dangerous, and I, I hope that um, the, this student doesn't die. Yeah. Oh, the student's in the chat. I guess I don't have to anonymize it anymore. Hey, Ariel. I just sent Dan a few more because I'm curious. Oh, God. These are all like contextually dependent on like what you're talking about. No, are Dan, they, they aren't. Ugh. <laughs> Fuck. They're all file extensions. They're all dot and then that. Yeah, but would you say 7z? Or would you would call you? it a 7zip file? The question file? is, would you? No, I'd call it a 7zip file. With so the seven you would zip... go when dot 7zip? No, because if you say oh. the dot, then you would spell the extension. Yeah, I tried to think of ones that were like seven interesting. ZIP? Who would say that? Yeah. It's just well, uh, no, it's, it's seven Z. Z. Yeah, it's just seven and then the character Z. Oh, but I didn't say when. I would have said when dot exe if I had said the dot. Yeah, well, that's not an extension then. So seven. Yeah, I would say seven Z. What about dot? Okay, dot dot zip though, right? 
I, I sent you a few. I sent you a few. Go for, go through. Oh, Jesus. You're putting them on the spot again. Yeah, that's the whole point. Uh, IMG? Would you call that an image? I, I don't think I've actually ever used that extension. I don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, tar? I would say tar. Okay. Tarball? I think that's... I think most people say tar. Yeah. Okay. All so right. you can have a couple of them, but you can't... <laughs> I hate this. Lizar says, Luke, I adopted I two this. cockatiels, and I uh, love to spoil them. Mm. What are your bird's favorite toys? Anything they can destroy. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, that's a thing. Birds okay. like picking at things and pulling it apart sure. and doing stuff like that. So um, they like there's like this confetti paper really thin strings of confetti paper that will be in like yeah kind of wrapped around things and stuff and they enjoy like pulling at that and pulling them apart anything with strings um so violins then <laughs> i mean honestly if they got up the you know the bravery to approach the violin and start messing with the strings they'd probably love it <laughs> that's fair yeah because they can pick at something and it like makes weird noises and stuff yeah they'd, they'd probably absolutely love that Okay, I've got one for you guys then. I'd be worried about the, the material of the string. We are never moving on from this topic, are we? I'm just this angry. This is how you guys must feel when I'm digging myself into a hole. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm... I'm okay, let's come back to it. I'm not allowed to say XE, but you can say TAR. What about R-A-R? RAR. 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 Yeah. RAR. So what's that? So why is XE wrong? Or any wrong, but it you can is. say RAR or TAR. It just is. I mean... I mean, I get it, but like, yeah. This is English. Even when there is rules, there isn't rules. I didn't know that this was a rule. <laughs> I feel I feel like I've been I've been just wrong my whole life. Yeah, it's, yeah. And and nobody told me. Just That's like, not a feeling, Dan. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't care about your feelings. <laughs> oh, got him. Oh, shrieked. Uh, okay, uh, Linus, would you ever move to the states? Okay, so I see that your goal now is to get back at me for making fun of you by asking me questions that are going to get me canceled. I love it. <clears throat> uh, no, I wouldn't. I, um, I Believe it or not, and this may come as a surprise to Americans, but other people who live in other countries are actually proud of their countries too. <laughs> It's, I know, it's, it's one sometimes of Sometimes it's hard, but yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. We have, we have our own challenges. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I'm, I'm, a prou I'm a proud Canadian. What can I say? Uh, there are places that I would consider moving, but I haven't seen anywhere in the States that has floated my, floated my boat. Um, I at one point considered Vancouver, Washington, the other Vancouver, but that wasn't because, you know, I looked at it and I went like, oh, wow, I really want to leave the Pacific Northwest because it is in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it wasn't because I was thinking, wow, I really want to leave Canada. It was more along the lines of, there are significant financial advantages to living yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, you live in uh, Washington state where income taxes, if I recall correctly, at least at the time, nothing. Um, and then you're right across the Oregon border. So you can cross border shop in Oregon state where there's no sales tax. So your money, you're, you're essentially, you have like a tax, you can double dip um, on the on the taxation policies of the taxation approach of these two states to really stretch your money in Vancouver, Washington. Um, that was that was that was what I was kind of into. Uh, and as far as I can tell, everyone kind of in the Pacific Northwest is our you know PNW bros. Yeah, like we um, we ran in, we've we've multiple times when traveling we've run into you know Oregoners, Washingtoners, whatever they call themselves. We all feel pretty similar. And it's like it's almost like being being forged in the fires of no fire and just constant rain and cold and miserable <laughs> all the time. Just gives you a certain outlook. <laughs> yeah, everyone's pretty similar. Yeah. yeah um, Oh uh, yeah, apparently that's still true. Washington still has no state income tax. So yeah, that would be that would be just like a supreme hack um, hanging out there, especially because, like I said, as far as I can tell, culturally, we're pretty. I'd say we probably have more in common with our PNW Americans uh, up here than we do with like the rest of Canada. Some Eastern Canadians. The yeah. Rockies is quite the divide, to be yep. honest. Canada changes a lot once you cross the mountain. Loving my windbreaker and backpack combo nice. in unseasonably rainy Chicago. Question for all. 
how do you handle being told you are the best for a promotion by higher ups and developed for it, but passed up? I mean, I think the way you handle that is you start handing out resumes. I mean, yeah. I don't think there's another real answer. And then if you don't get any bites, then, you know, maybe they were just giving it to you soft. And if you do get any bites, well, then you've got a bite. And then you've got either a new position or, or ammo, ammunition. Recently received a screwdriver and flannel the other day and will definitely buy more. Linus, you once mentioned how using primer paint combo is lazy. Would you mind elaborating on that? When and why? That may be one of those things where I'm a little bit old school. Um, it's possible that there are primer paint combos these days that are really, 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 really great. But the thing is that primer and paint have different compositions. Primer is designed to be an adhesion layer um, to act as uh, an intermediary for the wood or metal or whatever it is that you're trying to coat and the paint that's going on top of it. Paint is designed to act as a barrier layer, and it has good adhesion. I mean, if you've ever tried to get paint off of something, you'll have some idea. But it's not necessarily designed for blocking stains or for that, that, that maximum adhesion. So um, as far as I've ever been able to tell, a paint primer combo is not going to get you quite the level of resilience that primer with two layers of paint is gonna get you and to be clear i'm talking like house painting i don't know the first thing about airbrushing or like various other ways of applying paint i'm talking like your typical uh you know latex uh acrylic latex house paint or yeah i mean even yeah i mean even oil based like an alkyd based um coating as well so that's you know maybe not as true anymore but primer still exists and if it didn't need to still exist it probably wouldn't and if what you're trying to do is reduce the number of coats a don't do that and b there are ways that you can kind of hack around it you can tint your primer so that way at least if you're if you're using something with a really deep base like a really vibrant orange or something like that um, that way you can reduce the number of coats of that poor coverage orange uh, by having an orange primer underneath it rather than like a vibrant white primer because the the more coloration pigment you have to put into the paint, the less blocking pigment you can have in the paint. So there's there's definitely reasons to use tinted primers, but I would personally avoid paint primer combos because I'd rather just do it properly, traditionally. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, it looks like people. It looks like my knowledge is not out of date. Mm. Yeah, primer and two thin, even coats. That's that apparently still the way to do it. Repaint. You're right, and you're right. Separate pro separate products. Combined products are a lot better than they used to be. Okay, yeah, there you go. Um, so they have improved, but um, yeah. You got, uh, no, I was gonna say something, and then I forgot what it was. So goodbye. <laughs> See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah. I kind of forgot this is the last show before then. I know, right? I snuck up. I know. All right. I insist that we take the Apple boxes up for Super Checks tonight. Sure. Because I think that your poor performance the last couple of weeks might be ergonomic. <laughs>